What was something embarrassing that you did? Tried to hide, but got caught anyway. NSW. First time I trimmed my pubes I tried being all sneaky about it and used a pair of scissors so nobody would hear the electric razor. I dumped the pubes in the toilet and shut the lid. A few hours later the family and I are at the dinner table and my sister pulled out her phone and brought up a picture of all my pubes in the toilet. I forgot to flush. My dad was trying so hard to hold in his laugh. My mom just let the laugh out and my sister had that look of satisfaction of embarrassing me. You should have asked her why she had taken a picture of her pubes. Well I took a condom a friend offered me for a party. I didn't use it. I didn't want anyone in the house to know. So naturally I tried to hide it. Mum found it was shocked but my dad reassured her that one condom is a lifetime supply cause I play too much battlefield. Sick burn dad. So I really, really hated hard boiled eggs as a kid. But my parents insisted on my eating one every morning because, health or something. I tried throwing it away once or twice but got caught so my parents knew to be wary for any child shenanigans. What could I do? I couldn't take it to school and dispose of it there. If I got caught doing that I'd be a weirdo. I couldn't hide it somewhere not the trash can because it would rot and get awful. One day my parents left to go to work and I had about a 5 minute window. Then I noticed the roof. Oh my god. Yes. Throw the egg on the roof. Out of sight. Out of mind. A bird will probably eat it or something. Perfect crime. I did that for 2-3 days and was very proud of myself. And then about a week later I hear my dad mentioning needing to change the roof shingles on the house. Ah. Maybe the hypothetical birds ate all the eggs. Or maybe the roofer guy came down with a plastic bag and a weird look and said you had all these hard but wild eggs on your roof. And my parents slowly turned to look at me and I wanted to die. Right then. A bird will probably eat it or something. That's some weird kind of cannibalism there. When I was a kid my parents used to get the Adam and Eve sex catalog where you could order adult toys and DVDs. The 90s woo. So one day I found a bag of old flyers and crap that they were throwing out. And for some reason I looked inside and it had a bunch of these catalogs in them. So I took like 4 other and hid them under a drawer in my dresser. So I would dig them out when it was gentleman's time. I was probably 13 at the time, and one day my mom was helping me clean my room to donate some clothes and she fully pulled out the bottom drawer of the dresser and found my stash of pee catalogs and made me throw them out. In hindsight not really that bad but at the time I was like a freaking deer in headlights. I was talking about how there was a new pretty co-worker to my boss, when said co-worker was in my peripheral vision. Tried to hide it by saying it was someone else and walked away. She was 23, I was 16, and my face was red. When I was about 10, my dad was dating the woman of a girl I went to school with. Circumstances led to me having to sleep over their house. I can't remember exactly how it happened, but I ended up crapping my pants. I was able to hide my underwear in my bag. And I had other clothes so I figured I was good. The next morning, while we were sitting down for breakfast, the girl and her sisters came running down, with my tighty witties on a stick screaming he pooped his pants. Absolutely horrifying. The woman of a girl just sounds weird. I know what you meant to type but, still funny. One time my wife and I went grocery shopping and my wife was like I wanna make some chocolate milk. I haven't had any in so long. So she got some Hershey syrup and a gallon of milk. We went home, watched TV, went to bed. Only I couldn't sleep. I had something on my mind. See, I had been silent about the whole chocolate milk situation. But the fact was, when she mentioned making chocolate milk, I got very excited. It had been years for me as well. So I got up, went into the kitchen, made myself a glass of chocolate milk. And Jesus Christ it was delicious. My mother was a cruel woman. Cruel to the point of telling me I could have one glass of chocolate milk and not letting me have any more till the next day. Well mommy ain't home tonight. Josh is grown up. And married. Josh has pubes now. Josh goes to work. Josh is having all the goddamn chocolate milk he wants. So I poured another glass. And another. And another. When all was said and done. More than half the gallon was gone. As was a sizable chunk of the chocolate syrup. Josh was beginning to feel sick. 
I went into the bathroom and vomited. Got a little on the dog, but she was okay with it. I felt gravely embarrassed about having drank so much chocolate milk and vomiting on the dog. I decided to throw out the gallon and the chocolate. I figured I could just tell my wife we must have left them on the counter at the grocery store, as I had been the one who put the groceries away. The next morning my wife was pee to find all the milk and chocolate gone. I tried to say we left them, but she was far too smart for that. You probably drank 5 or 6 glasses of the crap, and then vomited, and then threw it away to hide the evidence. Somebody was vomiting last night. It woke me up. I hung my head low and apologized. She hugged me and told me I was an idiot. I hope that she made you go back to the store to get more milk and syrup. Went on a vacation with friends family as a hormonal, barely 15 year old. Shared the same room as my friend. Fapped in the same room as friend. Friend, dude, what are you doing? Me, scratching. Continued to fap all week. Yeah my friends called me out on that till I drunkenly admitted to it 5 years down the line. The worst part is they were talking about something else and I thought they were pressuring me to fess up to it due to drunken misunderstanding. So I confessed my shame. I never really thought about why she bought the old place. I mean, I know her grandma meant a lot to her but, okay fine. I admit it, I jerked off next to you on vacation. I worked at a really small shop as a teenager, and towards the end of the night, 9pm or 10pm or so, the lone toilet broke. Of course I needed to take a crap but couldn't. We closed shop shortly after midnight, and I started my walk home. By the time I was on my walk home, the crap I needed to do had become an emergency. I'm trying to walk faster, but that seems to make me need go worse. So I slow down. My stomach is going through intervals between a scale of OMFG you must empty now and you should go to the bathroom soon. Each time on the slope I feel better. I try to run a little, just to get home sooner. Eventually, maybe a quarter mile only from home. I let some out totally unintentionally. But it feels glorious. My body is furiously trying to expel what I've got in me. But I just want to make it that last little bit to get home. More escapes. Outside of my control. But at least a bit of the pressure is finally relieved. I never realized crapping your pants could feel so good. When I finally get home, I've got about a fistful in my pants. And I just want to get inside and get cleaned up. Thankfully I'm wearing tighty witties which is keeping the mess mostly contained. I try the door handle but it is locked for the first time all summer. I can tell my dad is watching TV in the other room so I knock on the door so he can let me in. He takes his sweet, sweet time. He finally gets to the door and opens it. Hey Fiduk, how was work? Your mother and I are watching this good movie. It's about this and that and has all of these cool scenes. Me. Dad, I've got to use the bathroom. Dad, okay yeah sure. Just listen to this scene we watched where this and that happened. It was amazing. Hey it's a really nice night out tonight, isn't it? He just stands there talking to me, while I'm holding my butt with one hand trying to contain the nastiness that is in my pants. I nod and go aha to everything he is saying to just get inside as quick as possible. But my dad just wants to be chatty while blocking the door and I'm still standing outside. Some more squirts out, and now it's definitely liquid. I really don't want to drop a massive diarrhea bomb on my porch while talking to my dad. And since I'm 60 seconds, tops, from that dreadful situation coming to life, I decide to just rush into the house. Still with one hand containing the disaster in my pants, my other hand pushes my dad's arm off the door frame he was leaning against. I rush into the house and go straight to the bathroom. My dad seems angry and shouts, hey, what gives? Why are you running? What is? I finally barely hear him say no. As I close the bathroom door, I can only presume he got the wonderful view of me holding my pants with a large wet spot in the back, and plenty of brownness. When I was younger I drew a glory hole as detailed as my 10 year old brain could remember from those black and white pee mags under my dad's bed. I would whack off to my masterpiece and then my mom found it. We still haven't talked about it to this day. Only like 10% of kids do it. When I was about 12 years old we had this family reunion. No, this story isn't going where your perverted minds wanted to go. The reunion was in this beautiful mountain area, in this little line of cabins. My parents rented the cabin at the far end, and one evening most of the family, myself included, were hanging out in the cabin at the other end of the line. 
There's only one bathroom in these cabins, and it's connected to the kitchen where everyone is hanging out and chatting. Suddenly my stomach gurgles like mad and I know I have some diarrhea about to happen. I don't want to use the toilet though because I'm too embarrassed that everyone would hear me. So I decide to try and wait it out and see if it will go away. It works for a bit but then suddenly the diarrhea feeling comes back with a vengeance. And now someone is in the bathroom. Frick. I sneak out of the house and start walking back to my parents cabin. I get maybe one stroke four of the way there when I realize there's no way I'll make it if I just walk so I start running. I get to the front door, but before I can open it I crap my pants. Badly. It even got in my socks. Probably about 10 minutes later my parents notice I'm missing and walk back to their cabin to see if I'm there. They open the door and find me, crying trying to wash the crap out of my jeans underwear and socks in the sink. They were really cool about it though, and threw the clothes away and never even told my older brother about it. Thank god. Props to your parents. Went swimming when I was about 10. When I finished, I picked up all my stuff out of the locker and went into a cubicle to get changed. Hadn't realized I dropped my knickers in transit. Not just any knickers, Barbie knickers. A few girls a bit older than me in the changing room started throwing them around to one another and laughing. 10 year old me was devastated. When I was 10 I used to steal my sister's barbies and put them in copulating positions with my G.I. Joes all naked. One day while playing out my prepubescent fantasy my dad knocked on my bedroom door so I freaked out and threw the barbies and G.I. Joes into my closet. He heard me slam the door so he walked in and looked in the closet and found a naked G.I. Joe wrapped around a naked Barbie. Good times. I once got a BJ in a closet at a party. It was pitch black so I couldn't see anything. And when the time came, he, the girl abruptly pulled away and I accidentally finished all over my own shirt. I tried to wipe it off, but to no avail, and then had to walk around pretending like I wasn't covered in my own milky shame. 8 years old, riding my bike, and farted. Ended up being a huge corny shot. Went directly home refusing to sit on the seat. Hid the underwear at the top of my closet so no one would ever find it. Took my dad 5 minutes to wonder why I came home from the park early. Took less time to smell why and I confessed. TL. DR. Crap my pants. Hid underwear in my closet. Dad found out using super dad senses. When I was younger I went through q-tips like crazy. I used them to clean my nose, my ears, my teeth, whatever I felt needed cleaning. Sometimes multiple times a day. Embarrassed of how many q-tips I used and not wanting to get in trouble I started flushing them down the toilet. The toilet got backed up so they called a plumber. When they questioned me I blamed it on a neighbor kid that visited a lot. They reamed her out and never let her over again. When she spoke to me about it I said it must have been my brother. I never got caught but I sure as heck was more careful after that. When I was about 12 I used up all of my parents toner printing out lady pics. I got interrogated about it and I refused to crack. The next day before my parents got home, I burned the pictures as best I could and stuffed them into the trash can. When my mom got home, she freaked about the house smelling like fire, found the pictures and busted out laughing. The rents got a kick out of it and I was embarrassed as heck. Haha <laughs> this was the best one. When I was 13 I tried to smoke some bay leaves, got paranoid, ran around in circles in my room and broke my speakers. They say bay leaves are a gateway herb. Soon you will be shooting up nutmeg. Mustaches are not generally attractive on women. I have a slight one that I use now to get rid of whenever it comes back. Freshman year of college both my roommates were going to be out, so I used the time to myself to take care of my stash. One of them unexpectedly came back so I ran to the bathroom. I wiped it off but she still asked me what I was doing and what was on my face. So I told her and then she told me she just waxes hers. So we ended up laughing about it. My junior year of high school I joined the cross country team because my friend said it was fun and practice started early August at 6 in the morning. So the workout was perimeters where we run around the school a couple of times each time is 2.5 miles and on my second perimeter I have to poop so I run up to the track and ask my coach if I could use the bathroom. He told me to hurry up because we are gonna stretch soon. 
I start to speed walk to the bathroom which was kinda far from the track and about halfway to the hallway door I crap my pants. But there was more poop. At this point I sprint down a long butt hallway borderline liquid poop dripping from my short shorts bust open the bathroom door only to find the bathroom is pitch black. I shuffle my way into the biggest stall and at this point I either go out there half naked or pull my pants down and crap into the abyss so I crap into the dark I didn't even make it near the toilet. I spend a good amount of time looking for the toilet paper dispenser, find it, clean myself as good as I can and head back outside. I take a back way to the front of the school where the soccer field is, grab some mud and smear it on my leg where the crap was and some grass to make it look like my shoe did it. I make to stretches and we do the butterfly one and the poop smell seeps from my thighs people start staring and see the crap that covers the inner part of my thighs. Freaking short shorts. You tried. Here's mine. I used to sneak pee from my uncle. I basically had to go downstairs, it was another one level apartment type place. He hid the VHSP behind his bar. One night I was returning a video and he was in the room around the corner, with a small flashlight I inched my way behind the bar, trying not to make any noise, but then he came out hearing something. I covered the light and froze, and I do mean freaking froze. He stopped right by the bar, looking just over me to the entrance of the place. He saw nothing and just when he turned to leave he spotted me there. What happened next was the most amazing butt whipping my mom ever gave me after finding out. I had a lot of paintings in my room. I hid P images and my Eminem Marshall Mathers CD on the frames behind the pictures. My dad checked one day and found all my crap. Jerkin' it. A few years back a few friends and I decided to take some mushrooms and have some fun during the summer. We had been smoking weed for a while that day and took the mushrooms in the evening. I was pretty baked and had a crazy body high. Probably about an hour after taking the mushrooms I start to get an even crazier body high. I don't smoke anymore, but one of my favorite things about smoking weed was masturbating while baked out of my mind. I had also never masturbated on mushrooms before and hatched a brilliant scheme to go rub one out before my friends and I really started to trip. My two friends were down in the basement watching the last few minutes of Lord of the Rings. So I excused myself to go upstairs to my room and try to explore what jerking off while super baked and on mushrooms would be like. I pull up a video and get myself situated at my desk, which is right next to my door. I go about my business and start to become very distracted by various elements that were not pee. Not great for keeping my soldier upright. This is more difficult than I expected. I pull up my old time favorite video and set my sights on trying to finish. I'm tripping pretty hard at this point and kind of lose track of time. Prior to this I had turned the sound off, but now I'm using headphones. The sound is incredible. The visuals are getting crazy. I feel like I'm in the video. I was in my room for about 45 minutes and it felt like 5. Understandably, one of my friends was curious about where I had gone and came up to find me. I thought I had locked my door, but in my inebriated state didn't close it all the way. One of my friends came in right as I was about to finish. I was incredibly startled by him coming in. I closed my laptop and stood up so fast trying to pull my pants up that I almost knocked my desk over. I stammered out I was just changing but there was no hiding it. He definitely knew, but luckily we've been friends for years and he didn't care. We had a laugh and went hiking. TL. DR. Wanted to jerk off on mushrooms. Got too distracted and spent way too much time trying to finish. Concerned friend comes to find me. Never found out what finishing on shrooms feels like. I do it in the fresh produce aisle at the supermarket all the time. It's great. My grandparents found out I was freaking my boyfriend at the time. A shitstorm ensued. I am 18 years old, still afraid to get caught masturbating. When I was 17 I was at a 4th of July house party and I had hooked up with one of the young ladies there. We went into my friend's elder brother's room, locked the door and proceeded to get busy. Welp it was the first time I had ever been with a squirter. In fact I didn't even know that was a thing and assumed she had peed all over me she was on top and it got everywhere. It soaked this guy's bed. When we finished up I didn't really know what to do so I flipped his mattress and remade the bed went back out to the party and had a good time. 
Women talk too so I wound up getting a pretty good rep from the whole encounter. I had all but forgotten about it at the beginning of the school year when that guy's older brother kicked the crap out of me on the first day of school for fricking up his bed. It was worth the skicking to be honest but it was 3 years later that I learned she did not pee and that was why I had girls that wouldn't give me the time of day before starting to talk to me. I always cry at a happy ending. When I was a teen I masturbated fantasizing about my cousin and googled exactly that, because I was worded out by what I just done, and a bit curious about did anyone else had any similar experience. I googled it on an old Nokia, and I didn't know how to delete search history. Long story short, my brother saw that and mocked me. I shrugged it off, said something like it were my stupid frisky classmates fricking around with my phone, and he somehow believed me. Or maybe he didn't but tried to make it look like he did. I prefer it that way anyway. I used to never pee standing up, unless at a urinal. So one time I went to a relative's house and had to really pee so 14 year old me just starts peeing without putting the toilet seat up. I had no idea that the pee would go everywhere like that so before I had time to react and adjust my aim I had already peed on the ground toilet seat. So I panicked and took a towel that was being dried and wiped all of the pee and then casually hanged it back hoping the ping 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 I pee all over her. It was around 4am so I knew she wasn't leaving anytime soon. I didn't know what to do. And just laid there 4 hours trying to block her from the wetness which was almost the entire bed. She finally got up to go to the bathroom. When she was in I took off the fitted sheets and laid some clothes over the spot the best I could and laid down on top of the urine. Which was all over the bed so she had about 1 foot of dry space to sleep. She kept telling me to move over and quit hogging the bed. We started to actually fight about it and I just blew up fine I pee the freaking bed. I remember once when I first started my period. I thought it was pee or something and what more I was out watching a soccer match with my dad. God that man can't handle blood for heaven's sake. So I was so embarrassed and scared because I thought my organs came out and it's starting to bleed out my butt. Because that's where crap come out after everything right? Anyway, I was wearing bright red pants and there was a huge dark red patch in the middle of the back and I was like, crap, dad's gonna see this and he's gonna crap bricks. So I decided to try cover it up by not letting my dad see the back of me. So I was walking awkwardly when I went back to the game. After that, we were about to leave I stood up and started to go when this lady went, Hey, you have blood on your pants and my dad saw because I was walking out of the stadium and he was behind me and he went all white and started freaking out. Remember when I said he couldn't handle blood, especially not that much blood, and he was like hyperventilating so much so that the lady who pointed out my bloodied pants had to calm him down and tell him it's nothing because it's just period blood 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 it was so embarrassing for me because everyone around was just looking at me and my dad freaking out. TL. DR. Got my period. Dad who has a phobia of blood spots that is bigger than our index finger started freaking out while another lady had to calm him down. That lady has terrible tact. In high school, freshman year, I developed into a bit of a pyromaniac. I absolutely loved burning random things. IDKY. Well my parents caught on and forbade me from burning anything so I had to do it in secret. One day I decided to try and burn an orange. I took it into the bathroom, I think I stuffed some stuff inside it and I tried to burn it. Obviously it didn't burn very well and I ended up giving up. I however didn't want to throw the burnt orange in trash so I decided it would flush easy enough. After all I had taken bigger shoots than this orange. It seemed to go down fine. And I went about my day. Well an hour later my sister's friend came over and clogged the crap out of our toilet. She was about my age and decently attractive so I thought it'd be funny to tease her about it. My parents had to call a plumber and dumbfounded he told my parents he found a burnt orange. They were pee. But the worst part is my sister told her friend why the toilet had been clogged and I was forever known as orange boy. I mean this in the nicest way possible but boy, you must be retired ha ha. Great story. This happened on Monday. I went in to get blood tests done. 
I don't fear needles, but something about blood tests always makes me dizzy to the point where I nearly faint. I think it's the idea of them extracting blood from my body, but I'm not really sure. Anyway, this nurse was clearly new and couldn't find a vein. This is normal, but experienced nurses usually can in the end. This one just kinda panicked and stabbed me anywhere. So then it took ages for the blood to come out. She kept whispering oh, it's taking ages to come out. It's really slow, etc in my ear. I started going dizzy but I tried to stick it out as it's usually over before I actually have time to faint. Nope, my ears blocked so I said I don't feel good and she had to stop and lay me down etc. After laying there briefly I felt awkward so I said okay I feel better and got up so my mum could get her blood taken. I sat in a seat next to her. I felt a bit off, then suddenly felt a bit sick. Then I was sick, everywhere, all over my mum, all over the nurse all over myself. I wanted to not tell anyone, obviously, and when I got home my brother asked so. How did it go I rolled my eyes and said it was fine with a little smile to give the impression that it was no big deal. Then he saw my jeans, my puke covered jeans, and I guess then he smelled the vomit, too. He grinned, and said so you were sick. Then as my smile fell he walked away laughing. Dang it. One time I went to Florida when I was 14 by myself to stay with some family down there for the summer. I was super paranoid about pooping in other places besides my own house. So I was holding this crap in for like a week and a half and when I finally went, it was in my aunt's house and I clogged the toilet with two huge logs. I was so embarrassed but I couldn't get them to flush so then my aunt came in and tried to plunge it and the crap came back flying up and got on her. I was mad embarrassed. Oh lord. The classroom p day barkle. When I was about 12 I saw a niche in the school playground market. And I, the bright little turnip that I was, decided to print off some pretty hardcore pee pictures to sell at school. Like full on super macro close oops of a pee in the V. I, however, am not a savvy businessman. For some reason I decided to sell these shameful images in Ray class. For the uninitiated, that's religious education. Of course I was caught by my hyper-religious teacher, who was utterly astonished that little old me would debase her and the rest if female kind with my little venture. I tried to blame it on my, then and current, friend, but she smelled the perversion in my sweat. She told the head, the head told my parents, my parents cut me off from the internet, and I haven't looked then in the eye for the last decade or so. I still really like pee though. When I was 16, I was curious about masturbation and so I went to the AOL chat rooms for tips. One nice guy told me a long candle. So one night I tried it. It just hurt so I just put the candle behind my TV. Months later, my mom was in my room cleaning talking to me when she found the candle. Well I'm horrible at keeping cool and so when she asked what's the candle doing in my room, I starting freaking and was like, what? I didn't do anything with that. Don't touch that. My mom looked at me, laughed and told me haha, I just thought you wanted to light a candle. Good for you for trying. That's hilarious hahaha <laughs> xd. At uni, I'm masturbating. Don't lock door. Friend walks in. Grab towel and pretend I've just had a shower. When I was young, my brother and I shared a bedroom and a bunk bed. He had the bottom. I had the top. One day when I was very young, maybe 8, my little brother did something that made me mad and so I crawled under our bed and scrawled little brother is stooped on the wall where no one would ever see it. Fast forward to 5 years later when we're moving out of the house. My parents caught me when the bed was removed. When I was 8 some chewing gum got stuck to my hair so I went to the toilet and cut a large freaking part of my hair off with a cursed nail clipper. Gotten real good smacking by pap when he was combing my hair for daily school next week. Pocket pool. The scratching part. First week in America school. My hygiene isn't up to standard yet. Long story short. Trying to scratch my balls and well my teacher calls me out on it. A funny thing is, I did not the joke until 3 years later. I don't the joke now. I had explosive diarrhea and pooped my pants in the realtor's office when my parents were looking for high priced real estate. I cleaned myself in the bathroom and the toilet had a warning about toilet paper. So I tossed it. It apparently smelled right away and only got worse when my parents talked to the realtor as I was cleaning myself. 
One day after school, I was 16 or 17. My girlfriend and I went back to my house to get it on. School was out around 3.15 and I had to work at 4. I worked in a shop my dad ran. About 3.30 we are getting with it and I hear the front door of the house. I hide my girl in the stairway to the attic. Throw on some shorts and go downstairs to the kitchen. Shirt off and pretending like I'm getting dressed for work. My dad had stopped by the house for some reason. There was awkward small talk and a couple minutes later he left and said he was headed to the shop and would see me there. As soon as he left I bolted up to get my girl. We abort the freaking great line A and both get dressed and rush out to my car. As I'm pulling out of the driveway I look in my rear view mirror and see a familiar van coming up the street behind me. There's dad. He knew crap was up and circled the block waiting for me. Nailed us. Dead to rights. Took my girl home and went to work. Dad was there and crap was awkward. Few words were spoken other than him saying son. Don't lie to me. I've been there. Done that. I hope you're being safe. Yes dad. You don't have to worry. I'm sorry. We never spoke of it again. And that's the first time I got caught in an amorous act. When I was 3. I pooped my pants and hid the poo under my bed in shame. My mom found it. I was at boarding school and was jacking it in my room when I was on a study period. Suddenly my door started to open so I quickly pulled up my trousers and underwear and stood up. No idea why I did this, and my house mistress walked in. But it was too late. I was already jizzing in my trousers. I stood there and looked her in the eyes as I orgasmed in my trousers. Waves of pleasure racked my dong. And waves of soul melting embarrassment crashed over my very being. I was 14 and on my period. I didn't like tampons so I wore pads. I was running with a friend across a parking lot. And it fell. Down my leg and onto the pavement. My friend heard it hit and asked me if it was mine. I tried to say it wasn't but she never believed me. She did the honorable thing and picked it up with a tissue then threw it away. TLDR. My friend picked up my bloody pad. Back in the second grade, my friend had started dating this girl he had a crush on. I was friends with both of them, so using an old box from one of my dad's own design software boxes, I made them a gift. I wrapped up the box with some fancy tape, and put a note I wrote inside of it. Now, I had just learned the concept of freaking and I hadn't fully understood it yet. So on this note I had written, if you love her you can have a one way, you can have a two way, you can have a three way, and so on and so forth up until about 12 or so. I thought this would be a great present for them and that they would love it. I wrote a note and stuck it to the front that said to the happy couple. I then proceeded to try to hide this box behind our small crappy printer and thought that I had done a great job. I then went to bed and thought nothing of it. Then about an hour later, my dad called me out of bed and asked me what the box in his hand was. He found the box and then opened it and showed the awful note to my mom. My parents also must have thought that I was going to give it to them, since it wouldn't exactly cross your mind that your 6-7 year old would be giving it one of their friends. TL. DR. Made present for friend and new girlfriend. Added overly obscene note in second grader talk. Parents find said note. Parents think it was for them. What's something you enjoy doing but would be embarrassed afraid to tell others? I spend hours every day on Google Earth. To the point where I know a decent amount about nearly every large region on earth. I hate talking geography with people though cause I know I come across as a know-it-all. I kinda want to go to a renaissance fair. Like seriously. I don't know why. But I feel like I would enjoy it. But I don't think anyone around me would go. If I'm alone at home or by myself on a long road trip. I like to talk to myself as if I'm carrying on a conversation with someone I know, a TV show host, etc. I do this a lot too if I get into a conversation with someone, and didn't like how it ended. So I go through the different scenarios of how I could have handled it better. I also do this as a venting process. If I'm mad at someone, I yell at an imaginary version of that person instead of yelling at them personally. Honestly I've probably spoken 10x as much to myself as to all other people. Call me weird but that's how I am. I literally have full blown conversations about specific topics that can easily last an hour or more. Used to think I was crazy but now I realize that's just how I process things and am cool with it. That being said I only do this in private lol. 
I enjoy watching and reading romance books films. I do not seem like a romantic person at all in real life but some of those books and movies are really good and they get to me. Currently reading Pride and Prejudice. To add on this, I'm a dude in his 20s who loves romance anime. Not cool by any metric. But god, I loved your name. Late in the evenings when most people are inside or already sleeping I would go to the, the playground and, I hope I am explaining this right, swing on the swings and listen to music. While swinging and listening to music I feel somehow extremely calm and relaxed, and I didn't find so far any other activity where I can turn off like that and basically feel nothing but pure happiness. I wish there were dedicated playgrounds for grown ups, because while being almost 30, I do still feel sometimes like a kid inside and would just want to be able to play and forget about the harsh reality we all live in. Unfortunately even as a teenager I was often asked why do I spend so much time on the swings and meanwhile I can't really swing anymore since I've physically outgrown them. I'm kinda really sad now realizing that grown ups thought I was a weirdo because I basically wanted to keep the kid inside me alive and continue playing and being happy. But hey, at least I can do my taxes now, right? Fun fun fun. Swings are relaxing and fun as heck. Wish it wasn't weird for adults to use them. Sewing. As a guy, some people know I have a sewing machine and use it, but I live in a pretty conservative area and people are weird about it. I tell you what, learning to tailor your own clothes rocks. It's so much easier to buy clothes now. Even if the pants are a tad long or loose, or that dress shirt isn't as fitted as you'd like, it's not that big of a deal to just modify them. Sewing is relaxing. You can focus on what you're doing without distraction. It's rewarding to see things take shape. And it's really useful. I really enjoy doing the skincare routine that my fiancé introduced to me. It's a whole process and is almost ceremonious. Picking my nose. I swear people will cop to all sorts of disgusting things but have you ever had a great big crust of snot from a dry day and really really got stuck in there and picked it off? Writing short stories. I don't share them with anyone. Same. I have multiple accounts on writing websites because I'm okay with strangers reading my work, but none of my loved ones. Crossing my legs. I do it when I'm home alone. Makes me feel sophisticated and confident. I used to do it back in college but I was clowned for it so I just stopped doing it in public. Keep doing it dude. It's classy AF. I'm too nervous embarrassed to dance, even by myself. I can hold a rhythm, form a percussionist, and I want to move, but don't can't convince myself to do so. I've always wanted to learn ballroom dancing, actually. I've always loved playing trading cards games, magic, ego, hearthstone, etc. I'm in my 20s and it's something that people still judge me for tbh. It's helpful that I have a lot of friends that play those games with me, but it is tough to explain to people that don't play these games. Literally some of the most popular games in the world, nothing to be embarrassed about, they're all so so good. Used to do reenactment, would do wild west, viking, did boar wars and crap. There's this little cult following for something called Maryland, known as frat fighting. In the 80s bunch of college students dress in full armor and then do full contact sports with hardwood poles. My mom's friend's husband is who introduced me to that tear of nerd and I miss it lots. I'm a nudist. I like to be naked when there is no reason to wear clothes. My wife is too. We are often naked at home. And we enjoy nude beaches and resorts. It's a big secret for us. We don't tell our friends or co-workers, because let's face it, most people think it's pretty weird. All that wears any swingers who want to swap spouses and host wild orgies. Nah, we just like being naked. It's easier to keep it secret that it is to make people understand. Playing The Sims 4. I've literally been me on our brass discord channels for weeks now I'm in too deep in the thing my initial character has got grandchildren now. I was really into Sims 2 and 3 when I was a boy. I always joke about playing Sims with my friends but I'm honestly thinking about getting it. Had so many good memories but I don't know if I would like it now. I like being naked outside. I have 10 acres that are very private. No neighbors can see anything but my house. I go out back, get on my ATV and ride through the trails in just boots. It's awesome to have the wind and sun all over your body. That sounds so freeing. 
I wish I could do that, but I live in a large apartment complex. I did once hike in my underwear in a remote area and that's the closest I've come to it. I play the clarinet. Mostly always classical music. I feel really dorky sometimes but I've played for 10 years. Never professionally but I love it. In 1940, three of the biggest hit makers were clarinetists. Benny Goodman, Jimmy Dorsey, and Artie Shaw. There were no guitar gods. Clarinetists ruled the charts. Multiple, competing clarinetists. People. Video games. I'm not really embarrassed by it maybe more afraid to discuss but I only talk about around people I know are gamers due to many people acting like it's taboo or something. My parents acted like it was a horrible thing when I was growing up too so that doesn't help. I like to act out scenes and do random voices, inflections and accents throughout the week. Whether I'm at home or driving to work, I'm basically brainstorming characters or scenarios for D&D. It would be a bit embarrassing for someone to walk in on me doing it, and they'd probably think I'm a little nuts. It helps me solidify the personality of characters or figure out a good way to implement plot points, though. I recently started watching anime and I am too afraid to tell others. I also like to lay naked in bed after a shower, when it's not too cold. Imagine being a kid when anime wasn't mainstream. Anime is a lot more accepted now than it was when I was a kid teenager. For reference, I'm 30. Painting my toenails. It started when my daughter was younger and she would do it, but now I just like the way it looks. I'm a diehard outdoorsman and the rough type, I just also have lime green toenails. My job. If I tell the bosses how much I enjoy being here, the suckers won't work harder to keep me here lol. I love getting a mani PD with my wife. There I said it. At first the couple who does the nails looked at me funny but it's awesome. I feel so clean and proper after. Also, it's a fun little date day we have. I wouldn't dare tell either parents or really anyone. I'm getting my first Marnie PD with my wife on Saturday. I'm so excited to see someone else that is doing this too. I don't really have anything because I've been making an enormous effort to be more accepting of myself and outgoing towards others. If there's absolutely one thing though it would be doing cardio. I'm a bit of a fat body and very self-conscious about my man titties flopping around when I'm doing jumping jacks so I do it all in my living room away from others like the coward I am. Every bounce of boob is another step towards greatness bro. Keep pushing forward. Being 25 and a bit of a bird a bird photographer. I am not super embarrassed or afraid to tell someone but it is something I always feel a bit weird about. Walking around parks or random roads just looking for birds since it is something that seems stereotypically for older retired people. Even just doing landscape photography, that has been my passion for longer, or any of my photography feels weird at times, like at my age I should go watch sports, go get hammered or do something manly but would just rather have a quiet day out in nature looking at landscapes and wildlife. It's because birds are rad. I love Legos. Like most kids I loved them growing up and as an adult I've always been fascinated seeing what other people put together. I felt super self conscious about buying them as an adult for fear of judgement. Why is a grown man playing with kids toys? I finally took the plunge about 4 years and mostly collect the Lego creator modular sets that come out each year. I have 9 altogether. I love looking at them and separating the floors so I can see the details inside. I have a lighting kit installed for a few of them. Putting them together is so fun and relaxing. It's a creative process that I'd compare to painting by number. The first time my parents and other family members saw them, I was sweating and super self-conscious because I was scared they'd make fun of me. They might behind my back, but have never said anything to my face. Only a handful of people in my life know that I do it. I'm 40, wife's 38, we have easily 20k worth combined. Telling people I collect and occasionally paint Warhammer models despite I don't play anymore and probably never will. I keep them stashed away for the most part as last girl who saw them was like wow you have like a really lot of them. Like a real lot since then been self conscious and keep them all biked and hidden away except for only a couple M. Anybody else enjoy crossing their arms in the shower, pooling the water up, and then seeing how loud of a splash you can make when you let it all fall at once? If you have boobs you can get an even bigger splash. 
Singing. Unlike the top comment, I was not in the school choir, only my primary school one when they let me in out of pity, and I am an atrocious singer. My best friend from primary school said that she used to dread sitting next to be in assembly because of how confidently I would belt out the hymns despite being 100% tone deaf. I've also been told by people close to me that I'm pretty bad, so it's definitely not one of those cases where someone is secretly good at something they think they're terrible at. But despite all this, I absolutely love to sing, and when I know I am completely alone I'll put on some Lizzo and sing to my heart's delight. Anything comic book superhero related. I love it, am a proper geek when on my own. Doesn't suit a high pressure military role however so it never comes out. Singing, some of my music taste, Disney songs, the classic Barbie songs, musicals, and talking in really high pitched voices to my animals. I garden and not just veg, I grow all sorts of fruits, flowers and even bonsai. I also really love roses and I can't help myself but to beam with pride when I can present my wife with a huge bouquet of what I've grown, yes for her, but for me, too. I also grow orchids and I propagate plants like my life depended on it. Almost no one knows this about me. Heck. I even built a greenhouse that is strong enough to withstand Colorado weather just so I can grow these plants. I was always told it was too feminine of a hobby. Sometimes when I'm home alone and I'm cooking dinner, I pretend that I'm a TV chef who is currently filming a show. So, basically I explain everything I'm doing, make comments as though I was an expert etc. It's very silly but it's a lot of fun. Another thing I enjoy doing while home alone, or when my wife is already sleeping, is to gather my favorite German and English poems online and recite them very theatrically, as though I was doing it on a stage in front of a large audience. I love literature poetry and I love acting, so that's maybe where this comes from. I feel very shy about it though, which is why I don't want to be seen doing it, unless I'm actually doing it on a stage. That would be okay. As for NSW stuff, I enjoy watching my wife with another guy. Also something I wouldn't tell anyone in real life. I actually don't feel embarrassed about it but I know people are super judgmental prejudiced and I don't want to deal with that. That probably actually makes you a better cook ironically. People often learn by teaching others, even if those others aren't real. I like chick flicks. 500 days of summer? Hit me up fam. I'm a buff viking faced son of a bee with a viking beard. Acidic humor. Face of someone who would twist your neck because you looked at me wrong. Ex Leo. Do you know how much trust would I lose if said I loved Mamma Mia? LOL. I build scale models. Planes. F1 cars. Tanks. Figures. My work has been published and I've won competitions, but I still don't talk to people in my personal life about it because it's seen as really nerdy, and a hobby only done by old guys. I eventually got over it, but fingerboarding, not tech deck, but the huge scene of real wooden ply decks, bearing wheels made out of real urethane, and tuned trucks. I even ended up getting pretty good and follow every fingerboarder and company. It pretty much filled that missing piece that skateboarding provided after I finally quit from repeated injury. I had some people roast me and I wouldn't bring it up to anyone but my close friends. I even got some of them into it. Now, I don't give a crap. I did, however, lie to my buddy about how much I paid for my current setup. I told him $20. But it was actually $100. The trucks alone are almost $50. $100 for a tiny little skateboard toy. LOL. I'm addicted to K-pop. I've been a metalhead since a kid but ever since the pandemic. I got hooked into the K-pop world. My family and some friends know about it. But my main group of friends don't cause we always crap on K-pop a few years back LOL. I got addicted to is 1. Dreamcatcher. And 17. I found pop during the pandemic, BTS for me, and I love it, it's just joyful and feels like escapism, literally got me through 4th quarter burnout last year, I didn't tell anyone about it for a while and then I decided I didn't care, even found a co-worker who is a fan. My hobby is making beats producing which I've been doing for 3 years now almost daily, only 3 friends know I'm doing it and family members of course. 
but even they don't know how invested I actually am in it. I really want to show it to my friends but I already know they won't understand it and aren't interested in the genre. I want to share it on my Instagram when I'm making something but I know everyone is going to think it's cringy and uncool so I keep it very low key. When I make music I usually have my headphones on even though I've got expensive studio monitors because I'm always thinking that I bothers my family members. Hey I have a friend who's exactly like this with his music too. DM me with her stuff and I'll give it a listen. I know how it feels to not be able to show her friends stuff and when you do they just go neat and don't understand. I have social media accounts that I use just to compliment people and write friendly encouraging things. Not for friends and family but to strangers and groups or YouTubes or TikToks etc. It's not really something I'm embarrassed about, but one of my favorite things to do after everyone is asleep is to go to my music room, have an edible and get lost in the music for a while. It's almost spiritual and I come away feeling refreshed and recharged. That does sound cool. I bought some really good headphones recently and like to chill with the scotch and music all by myself. Just forget the world. I love to lay down next to my dog and feel his warmth and smell him. He's not at all a stinky dog and he loves to be close to me. He makes me feel relaxed and happy. It's just. Some people may get the wrong idea or maybe not. I don't know. I used to love that too. His smell was really comforting to me. I miss my dog so much. Feel weak. Or small. I don't ever show my ladies that I have fear, weakness, or feel small. I am the rock. The mother of my daughter had a miscarriage before gifting me my daughter. It broke me inside and I still cry thinking about it. I have never cried publicly about my loss. I had to hold strong lease the mother collapse, along with her daughters. The loss hit us all hard and I held firm for them. I have processed that pain and I'm much better now. I am ashamed of nothing. Except the fact that I'm a grown man who still likes to play with my secret action figures like a child when my wife isn't home. I have three dogs. They all have their own voices. My bulldog has a lisp and is pretty crass. My minpin is always talking about his big dong and has a super high pitched voice. My pomchi is Italian. I got her after a trip to Italy. She starts every sentence with mamma mia. Reading a lot of these comments just makes me sad. I hope I can properly pass on to my daughter my attitude of just, while friendly and outgoing plenty enough. I basically try my best to never give a low flying frick about what other people think. I do basically all of the top comments. I swing with my daughter. I play video games. I love Lego. I goof off when I'm alone. I wonder sometimes if I might have some spectrum or two ATTEs of sorts because I love making stupid butt sounds all the time. I comb my beard too much. I have a healthy, giving, mutual sex life with my wife and with myself. Plus a few weird things I won't get into. Unless someone asked probably. LOL. I try to maintain a healthy socially consciousness and awareness on when I'm oversharing but I always enjoy what I want and I have friends that have lasted me a lifetime of 30 plus years and counting. Lord willing. Plenty to go. I know they don't always care what I'm into at the moment and I try to be aware of the general social cues on that stuff but I love my life and wish more people could feel like that I guess. Who cares what other people think of you? Their acceptance is really going to make having or not the things to do and enjoy in your life more fulfilling frick that. Cheers and be good to others and especially yourself everyone. I took the ice swing with my daughter part wrong and almost had a heart attack. I'm 50 you and I love watching these streamers on Twitch. I grew up gaming and I'm still a gamer to this day. But watching people game at my age is a little cringe. For the record. I watch little TV. If I do watch the TV it's usually Twitch. It's literally how I unwind. Don't know why I'm so into it. Parents of Reddit. What is the worst way your kids have ever embarrassed you? At a bakery near my house my sister asked my mom. That man has big bum. How does he fit on the toilet he heard and so did everyone else in the store. My mom found a new bakery. My boy when he was learning to talk, he said dong instead of clock. He was infatuated with them and would point and scream dong dong. One day we were in target and went down the clock aisle and the next thing I hear is him screaming there are dongs everywhere. Okay, not really their fault. 
but this is the story. I'm cleaning out the garage and have a bunch of stuff in the driveway to pull out the lawnmower for the first mow of spring. As I'm driving the mower I start to notice people driving by slowing down and looking mad at me. It was weird but I didn't think too much about it. Then two different people flipped me off and a few others yelled but since I was driving the mower I couldn't hear what they were saying. Plus they were driving. Finally I can't stand it and have no clue why my mowing is pee everyone off so I shut the mower off and start to go inside. Then I'm walking by my driveway, not visible from where I was mowing, and see my children, ages 5 and 6, climbed into my dog's old cage and somehow locked themselves in. So it looked to everyone like I locked my kids in a cage while I mowed the lawn. Not cool. When my son was in second grade, they wrote a book about their mothers for Mother's Day. It was cute because for a month he would ask random questions about my life, and follow up with in case you are wondering why I asked, there's no reason. When he brought home the book, I read it and was thrilled. When I was done, I set it down and only then noticed the cover. They had drawn a 8.5x11 portrait like photo of their mothers for the front. It showed me with a huge smile, messed up hair and a shirt that said let's get lit across the front. It was in reference to a shirt I had bought their father for Christmas with a lit up Christmas tree. Not only had I never worn it, he conveniently left the tree out of the portrait. I was mortified. And when I asked him why he did that, his reply was you look good in green and it's the only green shirt I could remember. I'm sure his titch's obvious dislike for me was not a coincidence. I would just casually show up to his class in the middle of February wearing your husband's shirt. Oh, how dumb of me I must have grabbed the wrong shirt. The Christmas one that says let's get lit on it. Not my kid, actually my aunts. They were in a department store and he was wandering around aimlessly while she shopped. Suddenly, she hears him yell, Mommy, come here, you have to see this. She goes over to the children's department and finds him pointing at a little person. He was an employee of the store. Look, mom, this is so cool he called. Pointing excitedly, she didn't know what to say. Oh, yes, he works here. He gets to come here every day. That is cool. No, mommy, I mean it's cool because he is a muppet. She apologized, grabbed my cousin and ran away. I don't have kids. But I actually remember doing this to my dad. I was in kindergarten. And every day when the kids were picked up from school. The parents had to do a sign out. I remember standing at the teacher's desk with my dad while he signed me out and made idle chit chat with the teacher. I remember her glancing at me and feeling like I needed to contribute something to the conversation so I just blurted out my daddy sleeps naked. I think it was something I had only recently discovered and thought it was just a fun fact. My dad was mortified. My wife and I had her brother and his girlfriend over for dinner. While we were chatting over coffee our young son walked up to the table and stood my wife's pink vibrator on a placemat and asked what's this daddy. He burst out laughing. Wife died of embarrassment. The girlfriend looked everywhere but the table and I just picked it up and said to my son that's mommy's shall we put it back. It was soon forgotten when more wine was drunk. When my son was about 3, we went to Jamba Juice. It was packed of course. As I was ordering, he squirmed out of my hand and went about 20 feet away from me. Proceeded to walk back and forth throwing his arms around and yelled at the top of his little lungs Frick. Frick. Frick he looked like a crazy homeless person. I was completely mortified. That sounds hilarious. When I was 4 we went to Olive Garden. I saw a black man at the table next to us and said Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan luckily he just laughed about it. I did this in an elevator when my family went on vacation except it was an Asian guy and I asked him if he was Jackie Chan. My parents were embarrassed but he thought it was hilarious. My daughter saw a woman at a store who had very large breasts. She yells out mama that lady has big boobies. Why you have little boobies? I do the exact same thing to my girlfriend all the time. Don't have kids. I did this to my parents at a mall. I spent a lot of my childhood in India, so I wasn't that familiar with how things went in the US. I was walking with my parents in the mall when I saw a lady who had her kid on one of those leashes for kids. So I yell out across the mall look, they have a kid for a pet the lady, looking really annoyed, picked up a leashed kid and walked away. I'm going to say this whenever I see someone with a child leash now. Hold your freaking kid's hand, he's not a dog. 
I don't remember where this took place or how old I was exactly, but I was young enough to talk and was still in a stroller, so I must have been about 3, apparently, as we strolled past a woman who happened to be black. I loudly said hi Oprah I guess I had never seen a black woman besides Oprah. My mom was pretty embarrassed but this woman was apparently flattered and laughed so I guess it wasn't all that bad. This happened to a friend who works at a daycare. She was helping a kid take his coat and boats off when the kid decides to blurt out my mommy has a really hairy front butt. My friend looks at the kid, tells him not to talk about his mommy's front butt and continues like nothing happened. She's pretty professional considering I would have laughed my butt off, then made the kid repeat it for my own humor to others. I started laughing so hard my roommate knocked on the door to comfort me and ask why I was crying. My dad once told me about the time he took me to a grocery store to just do some basic grocery shopping and I ended up wandering off and started screaming help as loud as I could when he found me. As I was a blonde fair skinned kid and my dad was a tall Greek Italian with dark hair and tan skin. Security ended up restraining my dad since they couldn't believe we were related and my mum had to be called over to confirm that I was his daughter. My mother's story, because I asked her. Comma my brother was playing t-ball and I was about 5 years old at the time. Mom was talking to my brother's friend's mother and some other mothers. This mother happened to be deaf, but read lips and spoke. I did not know what deaf was at this moment, or didn't pick up that she was. Comma anyways, my brother's friend takes a baseball to the face, and his cheek is swelling. Someone yells, you okay to which the friend replied, I'm fine but had a very swollen mouth accent to it. Comma 5 year old me decided to yell back, no you're not, you sound like your mother. My mother added, we were all just glad she couldn't hear you say that and pretended it didn't happen. My sister taught her 5 year old daughter the proper names for genitals. One day when my sister was filling her car with petrol, my niece pointed at a lady nearby yelling look mummy, that lady has a big vagina everyone heard, the lady had a camel toe. When I was kid, in second grade there was some sort of anti-drinking and driving campaign. I didn't understand the concept of it, so when the teacher said I hope none of your parents drink and drive, I raised my hand proudly and said that my dad does. My dad drank coca cola, I didn't know the difference between coke and beer. All I knew was they were brown, bubbly, and I wasn't allowed to drink it. Come to think of it, what is the point of a drinking and driving campaign in elementary school? so that you go home and nag your parents. I used to nag mine about all sorts of stupid crap I heard at school. When I was a kid, my mom and I went to the grocery store. As we're checking out, the cashier gives my mom the total, and my mom starts writing out a check. I look at her confused and say rather loudly, but mommy, I thought you said you didn't have any money in the bank? Oh god. Thanks for dredging up a memory for me. My mom was applying for a loan when I was 8. I blurted out, in front of the loan officer. I thought daddy said you weren't allowed to do that. He said you spend too much money that we don't have already. Yeah, mom didn't get the loan. Oh good we JPG. I remember my mom telling this story. Basically when my brother was little he learned the phrase ah crap but he would pronounce it aww she. Apparently he said it all the time when he dropped something. So, there my mom is, sitting in the kingdom hall. My grandma is a Jehovah's Witness and made us go to church every once in a while. When my brother dropped the Bible, it was dead silent and all you hear is aww she ha ha. My little sister loved dress up. One day, my mother had a group of guys in her bathroom laying tiles. My sister, having the time of her life, walked in wearing my mom's laciest and most revealing lingerie. Oops. As my daughter is too young to embarrass me yet here is what I did to my mother. The first time I saw a lady wearing a full burqa I excitedly screamed look mum it's Darth Vader. I'm not sure if the lady in the burqa knew who Vader was but she stopped and just stared at my mother who went beetroot and ushered me out of the shop. Upvote for beetroot. Not me, but when my mom took my brother to the grocery store when he first learned how to talk. Sitting in the shopping cart, he points at a black woman and says look mom. It's Bill Cosby, double quote. I was a little crap as a kid, and I can probably come up with way too many stories. My favorite, 
though, was when I was about 4 or 5 years old, I forget the details, but for some reason I was naked, bath time, maybe, and I had managed to run out of the house, I ran as fast as I could down the street, but my father was faster than I was, and he caught me, as soon as he picked me up, I started yelling you're not my mother, you're not my father, help, help call the police I think we just had some sort of anti-kidnapping speech at preschool. Now, we lived next door to a baseball field, and there happened to be a group of kids doing baseball practice, along with all their parents. So imagine my father, carrying his naked 5 year old daughter, who's screaming her head off about being kidnapped. My father just kept repeating no, really, she's my daughter in the face of all the angry, glaring baseball parents. Your kids are going to punish you for that one, and deservedly so. My dad used to pinch my fat face when I was around 5, and I hated it. One day we went to the park and he pinched my face and then walked off. Angrily, I began searching for him to get my revenge. I saw him talking to a group of people so I ran up to him and pantsed him. I pulled his underwear off too. When my son was about 3 years old he went to daycare at the YWCA where I worked out. He had just been potty trained and was excited to wear big boy underpants and usually told everyone at daycare what kind he was wearing that day. So one morning the cute guy I'd been flirting with holds the door open for us and my son says I'm wearing my superman undies today. Cute. Right? Then he says my mom is just wearing big, white ones. Tagged as big white undies don't have kids but I remember when I was younger, 5ish maybe, my brother was 7 or so, my mom was in a minor car accident while driving us downtown, it was just a rear ending but both of the cars pulled over and waited for the police, not sure why they came, but they did, the police officer asked my mom if there was anyone else in the van and she said yes so he asked her to open the door, at this time my brother and I thought it would be hilarious to drape ourselves over the car seats and act dead when the police officer opened the door, so yeah, frazzled mom and police opened the door, my brother and I are sprawled on the seats, eyes closed and not moving, she was mortified, I do believe we started laughing after that so all was well. We were driving down to the local village and had stopped to talk to a well respected matriarch type. Having opened the window to engage in polite conversation my 3 year old daughter announced my dad has a willy. Awkward. So, if you'd be so kind to let me know if you see it, I'd be so appreciative and then drive off. I don't understand why more parents just don't back their kids in such situations. I have two girls, 10 and 9. I decided to gather up their cousins, my niece and nephew, and take them to go see Johnny English. The theater was moderately full and it was the daytime, so children weren't minded too much. That was until my 9 year old decided to test everyone's noses and unleash a series of hellish farts that would make a grown man with a beefy bean burrito fetish cry. She continued to fire with no regard to the people behind us really, and I told her to let me know if she had to use the bathroom. Nope. Didn't work. She kept quiet, covering her fart with laughs up until the point I flat out asked, Little girl, do you have to boo boo? I'll take you to the bathroom, please stop. Of course, she didn't. Silent but deadlies, little poppers, big humps, and I seriously started to think she did it on purpose. The people behind us moved, and as soon as ending credits went, we hightailed it out of there. She didn't have to use the bathroom, but I had a long discussion about her farting habits. I don't know if it was that new healthy pack that AMC has for kids, wheat chips with apple juice, if I remember that right, but good lord, that was the worst. TL. DR. Kid farts up movie theater. People gagged and moved as a result. At least you can keep that story for when she's older and brings her friends back to the house. My 2.5 year old son is going through a bit of a train phase. Goes nuts when we pass by a train. Wants to watch Thomas the Train all day. ETC. Etc. So it should come as no surprise that he has latched onto a toy train as his favorite toy. The toy is the train named Percy from Thomas the Train Show. Everywhere we go he has to be holding Percy. Problem is that he is also quite clumsy still. The moment he drops Percy it's a mad dash to hurry up and get the train back to him. You see the problem is that he can't quite enunciate the word Percy. Instead he says P. Or rather he is sobbing out the word P. At the top of his lungs. Over and over. 
Not a parent, but my little sister who is 9 years younger than me, when she was 3, she, my mom, and I went to the store, we were standing on line to check out and a obese guy with crutches was standing in front of us, but my little sister opens her mouth and starts to say pretty loud, why is that guy, my mom thought she was going to say why is that guy on crutches but instead she said, why is that guy so fat I never knew the shade of red my mom turned was possible. When my daughter was 4 and 5 years old I was still in contact with my mom, and she would spend the night on Saturdays with her due to my work schedule. On Sundays she would go to church with her. About 5 months after this schedule started, my mom came home to tell me that my daughter had apparently told everyone in church that I was dead they never questioned her since they had never met me and she had only gone to church with my mom. I guess it came up in Sunday school when they were making Mother's Day cards and she didn't want to make one for me. So she told them I was dead. Her reasoning was that she was smart enough, even at 4, to know I thought church was a joke, and so didn't want to participate in making me church crafts. I could not stop laughing. The only thing that tops this is when she got up and had an argument with the preacher over Easter, because he was just not understanding that Jesus was a zombie. When I was about 9. My little sister said she had to show me something in my parents closet, so when the coast was clear, we go in there and she climbs up on the high shelf and pulls down a dildo. This dildo was designed to look like a real dong, which is how me and my sister knew what it was so naturally. When my dad comes home from work, I say hey dad, why do you have a fake dong a doodle? Do in your closet I can't even imagine how embarrassed he must have been. I quickly learned not to talk about dong a doodle do's in my house first post to make me literally laugh out loud. I will use the term dong a doodle do with my kids. I don't have kids but I remember doing this to my parents. We had an assignment in class that asked what we were most afraid of. The assumed answers was stuff like bears and snakes. Not long before this my mother, trying to be authoritative, stated that my brothers and I should be more afraid to do anything bad because the consequences would never be the same she would get really angry. Anyway, I wrote on my paper that I was afraid of both my parents, didn't want to leave my dad out either. My teacher never got to see it before the end of the day, so I brought it home. My parents flipped. My mother was freaking out asking me why I would write something like that. Probably with the best 7 year old troll face ever. I told her you said I should be afraid of you. They erased my answer and took me out for pizza afterward. Sorter in the same vein. My 3 year old called a black lady at Target Chocolate. Her reaction was the worst possible one. She laughed. And for a freaking month he called every black person we saw chocolate. When I was little, my mom used to give me small taps on the butt to tell me I'm doing something I'm not supposed to do. So one day, I was at Disneyland and a complete stranger offers me candy. My mother immediately whisks me away and takes me to the bathroom to explain to me why I must never accept candy from strangers or talk to strangers in general. Being the 3 year old me and having no clue what was going on, I just screamed don't hit me, don't hit me, I'm sorry. I wonder what my mom felt like as we exited the crowded bathroom. Not my kid, but something I did that my mom will not let me forget to this day. When I was really little, I was probably 3 when this happened. My parents, who are white, lived in a predominantly black area of Oakland. One afternoon, my mom was doing some work at home and I was watching a nature show about apes on Discovery. After she finished her work, we went to the grocery store. After our shopping, on our way out the door, my mom was pushing me in the cart as we passed a group of large African American gentlemen. Recalling the show I'd been watching that afternoon, I screamed at the top of my lungs, Mommy, Mommy, look at the gorillas. As she tells it, she couldn't even get out the words to apologize. Just avoided eye contact with every human being around and left as quickly as possible. My dad said he was both embarrassed and proud when we were at the supermarket one time and I saw a dump rack. Me being one and one stroke two at the time pointed at it and started yelling dump fuck, dump fuck, dump fuck he tried to correct me, but I just kept shouting out dump fuck, dump truck. Asked my mom for this one and it's kind of funny, anyways, when I was a youngster my parents sent me to a daycare run by nuns. I was really social but had a tendency to be a little bad sometimes. So one time as my mom is picking me up, 
The nun told her that I had sat on a girl and told her let's make babies. My mom was horrified. Funny maybe yes but she said I got spanked afterwards. No recollection of this at all. When I was about 6, I went grocery shopping with my dad. As we are walking through an aisle we see a man shopping who only has one arm. So being the 6 year old I was I stuck both my arms in my sleeve so only my elbows were sticking out and flapped them around. My dad said he has never been more embarrassed in his life. That may have been the last time he took me shopping. Dang. If only I had known about this get out of jail free card sooner. I was working in a kindergarten. Kids were eating lunch in complete silence when one kid suddenly blurted out my mom has a beard on her pp. All the employees cracked up. When my son was about 8, and coincidentally, shortly before we discovered he's red green color blind, I let him pick his own outfit before going with me to run some errands on a Saturday. He wore a plaid shirt, different plaid shorts, red cowboy boots, and a rainbow striped beanie hat with a propeller on top. It was okay. Though, my mere existence embarrassed the heck out of him when he was in his early teens. I suppose we are even now that he's in his 20s. I died when I got to the propeller hat. I remember when I was really young, maybe 4 or 5 years old. Mum and dad took me grocery shopping with them at the local Iger. I told them I had to pee but they told me I had to hold it. Eventually I couldn't hold it any longer so I went to the magazine section. Grabbed a magazine and sat on the floor and peed. Then I got up, put the magazine back and found my parents. Not realizing that my parents immediately knew from the smell and from the fact that my pants were soaked what I'd just done. They were so embarrassed. But when you gotta go. There's got to be a thread somewhere in the bowels of Reddit that includes the story of the Igo employee who found the magazine soaked in pee on the rack. When I was about 2-3 I called frogs fuckies. I was trying to say frogies. So one day while at the grocery store I see some frog picture and started screaming look at the fuckies. Looks at the fuckies mommy. At 23 fuckies was something quite different. This is something I did as a kid. I was probably 8 or 9 and I'd gone roller skating with some friends and the minister at my church. Two of the girls in the group were his daughters. My friends and I were standing around. Bragging about how grown up we were and the badass things our parents let us do because we were so mature. I didn't understand at the time what an X rated movie was. I just knew it was worse than an R rating. So I figured it just meant a super grown up kind of movie. Hoping to impress my friends. I said something like. My mom and dad let me watch X rated movies with them all the time our minister was standing just a few feet away and definitely heard me. My parents weren't even there. But even years later when I told them, they were mortified. Even though our minister moved away like 20 years ago, it still makes me feel like a huge jackass. To be fair, you didn't know. What was your most embarrassing moment in front of a doctor? I was embarrassed for the doctor. Many years ago I had a suction lipectomy done on my neck to remove excess fat. When I went back for a post-surgical follow-up, the doctor asked me to remove my blouse and bra. Never having been shy or modest around medical professionals, I figured he must have needed to see my neck in relation to the rest of my chest. So I happily disrobed and was standing there with my stuff hanging out, when he realized I was not another patient who had had a boob job. He calmly asked me to put my clothes back on, and apologized for mistaking me for the other patient. But he was blushing like crazy. I just got a chuckle out of it. Having a cut on my bollocks after deciding to make them a bit fancy for a checkup. Didn't want to go out but took off a few of the crazy long ones with a razor. Accidental nick. Bled like a mofo but forgot all about it by time the appointment came around. Then she asked me about the scab on my sack. I suddenly flushed and found myself looking down at this unfathomably hot doctor holding my plums in her gloved hand. Before I knew what was happening I was reeling off a story about catching it on a fish hook whilst organizing my tackle in the nude. It sounded ridiculous. She knew it. I knew it. I cringe every time I think of it. First time having a whole body scan. The nurse told me to go to a small room and undress. I did. And as soon as she looks at me she's all like what the heck. Apparently you are not meant to take all your clothes off. Sounds like her mistake. I was just getting my flu shot and the nurse asked which arm I wanted it in. 
I was wearing a sweater and I wasn't going to be able to roll it up to my shoulder so I started taking it off to give the nurse access to my arm. She looked surprised and rushed to close the door. I had a shirt on underneath but apparently she thought I was just stripping my clothes off so I felt really awkward the rest of the visit. When I was 13, the doctor saw that I had strep throat. You know that little stick they basically shove down your throat to swab it? I hated that test. When she put the stick in my throat, I had a bad reflex and kicked my doctor in the shin. The hard, most embarrassing thing to ever happen to me in front of her. I had an embarrassing thing happen with the strep test too. At age 11 I found out that I had no gag reflex and my mom joked my future boyfriend would be happy. I didn't understand why for a few years though, or why my doctor laughed. Kind of a different situation, because I wasn't a patient, but I was finishing charting. Stood up and then tried to sit on the rolling chair. I must have slightly pushed it backward because I could only catch the slightest edge of the chair. Tried to catch my balance and sit farther back in the chair slid back farther. This went on for about 15 seconds until I fell on the ground. It was so prolonged and awkward, and of course in front of a group of physicians about to start rounds. It reminds me of that guy who fell for 15 seconds straight and I love that gif so thanks for reminding me. Not sure if embarrassing is the right word, but I was definitely ashamed. When I was 14 I confessed to my mum that I thought I had depression. She immediately booked me to go to the doctor later that day, then my cat came in with a wheat seed in her eye which was fully hooked around her eyeball. We couldn't get it out so we had to go to the vet, which meant a 30 minute car trip with me holding a cat in agony. I got out of the car with cuts all over my arms, ribcage and sides, vet mercifully gave us a cage for free on the way back, helped that I literally bled on his bench. Went to the doctor a few hours later. Mum explained how I'd seemed distant and my grades had tanked that year to the doc who said yes, and I can see the self-harming. Mum said no, no, the cat did that today, we had to have her in the car, and I burst into tears because I had been hiding wrist scars from her. When I held out my arm to let the doctor look I felt so ashamed. Mum's a friggin' angel I didn't want her to think she'd failed as a mum. I hope you are doing better now. It hurts to know that you were in this situation. Went to the family doctor to get a lump in my armpit checked out. The nurse told me to put on a gown so I mindlessly stripped down naked and put on a gown. When the doctor came in he had a weird look on his face and said you really didn't need to take your pants off. Awkward. Why do they need to embarrass people jeez. So I had my son two years ago. Ended up with really low blood pressure and they gave me a lot of fluid. Like a ton. In the excitement after he was born, and without having slept in 24 hours, I forgot what the nice nurse told me when I was transferred to my recovery room that I should get up and pee frequently. One of the midwives came to visit me to see how I was doing. She was my least favorite one. I needed to pee. I got up and sat down very quickly because I started peeing the second I stood up. She thought I almost fainted and came over telling me that I needed to be more careful as I blushed and said I was peeing. Stood back up, got it all over her shoes even though I was trying to hold it in. Hobbled to the bathroom leaving the largest puddle of urine I've ever seen and still managed to pee in the toilet. And again while another nurse came in to help me back to the bed. Good thing my kid is cute. My epidural worked so well two nurses had to help me to the bathroom well after birth. Then call someone in to clean up the literal trail of blood from the bed to the bathroom. They missed a spot and I can see it in the pictures of my daughter meeting my son the next day. During a physical I casually asked my regular doctor what a red mark was by my mouth. He was writing something down and without even looking up he said you drool in your sleep. I've always wondered how long he knew that information since he didn't even need to look at me to answer. He was right too. My husband just never wanted to mention it. LOL. When I was 19, also a virgin at that time, I had a pulled muscle in my groin from work. Went to the doctor, and his first assumption, after confirming it wasn't testicular torsion, was a UT. How often do you freak? I don't. Come really? Like, none? I'm a virgin. At your age? I was freaking 19 in a town full of people I hate. I'm not here to be judged by you, just fix my pulled muscle. I pooped on a doctor while giving birth. 
I'd been eating a really seedy bread loaf leading up to labor, so it was really lumpy. They pretended like it didn't happen but I knew. I've heard from an OB nurse friend that it happens a lot, like more than 25% of the time. It was Valentine's Day at school. I was in third grade and you could pay a dollar to send someone a rose. Every kid got at least one rose, you know. So at the end of the day there are roses everywhere. When I think about it, they might have been different flowers. Our rose is expensive. And we started putting the petals down the backs of people's shirts. Well later that day I had an appointment with a pediatrician and when she asked me to pull my pants down for the hernia check, a bunch of rose petals fell out of my underoos. I must have fainted because the next thing I remember is my mom and the doctor laughing hysterically and I was laying on the floor. Probably carnations. They're cheap as frick, especially in bulk, and they're hardy enough to last the school day be abused by kids until you get home and your mum puts them in water without wilting. So last year I had my annual pap smear and I go to a little family clinic. They're all very sweet doctors and they all talk to each other about their patients. Well I used to have an IUD. I say used because I had a rare complication from it and after a few months it went through my uterus and took a little off road trip in my body. Now that was the first time this clinic had seen this complication so all of the doctors I saw wanted to ask about it and I didn't mind. But back to the pap smear, we were discussing the IUD and my surgery from that situation while I was undressing and she performed the scraping of my insides and while my legs are wide freaking open and the stirrup she goes wow, I've never seen that before, it's really interesting and scary. I know she was talking about the BC but I still told her, while I was laughing, not to say that as she is in my fanny. When I was 18 I had to get an external ultrasound to see if I had polycystic ovaries. The doctor who did the scan was in his 60s, a very abrupt and to the point doctor. He asked me questions, though never once asked if I had an active private life, maybe because mum was with me, then said that I would need an internal ultrasound because he couldn't find my left ovary. The doctor that did my internal ultrasound was a bit younger than the first one, and a woman. I remember being shocked at how big the probe thing was, it also wouldn't fit inside and it was painful. I told her that it hurt a lot and she asked me if I had ever been active in my private life. I said no. Her demeanor changed immediately, she backed off quickly, checked her paperwork and said that the other doctor had put down that I was active in my private life. He'd never even asked. I don't know if she was embarrassed. I definitely was. Underneath the gown I was exposed and had my legs up in stirrups. But I think she was shocked that the other doctor would have made that assumption without checking. I suggested that it could have been because mum had been in the room with me at the time. The doctor made an angry noise, then kindly asked why I'd been sent for an internal ultrasound. I said the doctor hadn't been able to find my left ovary. She did an external ultrasound and found my left ovary straight away. When I left, extremely sore. I saw her heading purposefully to the other doctor's office. Oh god. When I moved states to live with now husband, I was just starting a new job. He was out of town a lot for work. Not too many friends. Tons of stress. One night I was home alone and realized I started bleeding from my uh, backside. Called my now in-laws who live about a mile away and asked them to take me to the I had no clue where the closest one even was. He got there, was admitted, waiting to see the doc, and realized it wasn't blood from back there. I was having my period. I have no clue why I thought the first scenario, but when the doc came in, I had to explain my misunderstanding situation. After, oh, 25 years of menstruation at that point. Complete humiliation I got to live through again and again as the hospital bills came in. Oh poor you. I can totally see myself doing something similar under stress. Every year, the doctor tells me I need to try to put on some weight. During this year's checkup, I broke out the Yoda. Do or do not. There is no try. I totally bombed and Doc didn't even crack a smile before breaking into his usual spiel about Mega Mass 4000. I panicked when a doctor asked why our lung specimen has an incision on the third lobe, accidentally stabbed during dissection, spur of the moment lied about maybe our cadaver died from stab wound in the lung, I said, he replied, as an aspiring doctor next time own up to your mistake instead of making up stories to cover it up, 
I'm so embarrassed by my action then. I still cringe when I remember. I hate anatomy class. I have nothing but respect for this doctor. Although yes, I would have appreciated if he didn't do it in front of our group but I know I'm wrong about lying and it's fair to get called out for that. The value of credibility transcends all profession and it was reinforced to me that day. Had cyst on my tailbone that needed to be lanced and gauzed. Already an embarrassing situation for a young woman. Came in a couple days later for follow up exam and the very attractive young doctor said nice to see you face to face this time. I think he knew he was being cheeky, pun intended, but I was mortified. Pap smears are always the worst. The absolute worst one was when I was too shy to tell my doctor that. No, your student cannot shadow you when I'm spread eagle. He was explaining my fanny to the student for a good 5 minutes as though it were a diagram. It's even more special when the student asked what's that thing there by the cervix mucus is normal. Christopher, shut up. I had this happen recently. I didn't really mind because I've had two kids and tons of people have seen my goods as a result of it. Including my poor father who thought I had already given birth and burst into the room as my son was crowning. It was funny, though, listening to the doctor use my fanny as a teaching instrument. When I was a teenager, I jerked off, a lot, I can't remember exactly the problem, but at some point I worried I had damaged something, I think I started getting painful urination and this weird discharge once in a while and I didn't seem as hard, I ended up worrying about it enough to tell my mom, who took me to the doctor, primary care guy questioned me, then took my dong and brutally squeezed it, I'm guessing to check for discharge, I then got referred to a urologist, who at first harshly questioned me if I was active in my private, and not to lie, I was like 14 and a super awkward, zit covered nerd, anyway no one found anything wrong. I had bad OCD as a child and used to beat off too much to get the right number of wanks in, we're talking 20 plus a day here, eventually my dong swelled up to the size of a large sausage and I told my mother, she took me to a psychiatrist and he made me a chart we kept in the kitchen to count each time I jerked off. I had to go and fill it in every time I went for a wank. I was having horrible unexplained stomach pains. On the cold metal table on my hands and knees, somehow I didn't expect him to very forcefully jam a slippery lubed finger knuckle deep up my previously unexplored butt without even a warning. I instinctively kicked him hard in the chest while emanating a bizarre guttural growl scream mother in front of two female nurses and my overly Christian mother. One nurse burst out laughing and left the room. Being face down, I can only cringe and imagine the other responses. TL, DR, Doc fingered my butt in front of my mom. I have just died laughing, I'm so sorry for you, but heck that's the most natural response ever. I was around 12 13. This older man around 50 was checking my balls, doing the whole turn and cough thing. Anyway, in an attempt to make the situation less awkward I said, this must be your favorite part of your job. He then told me, just wait till you are 40 and I have to check your prostate. I started laughing, then I realized I was laughing while this old guy was cupping my balls. It got kinda weird. When I was 18 I went to the doctor because I was having testicular pain and was concerned. My regular doctor was out on vacation at the time so they scheduled me with a different doctor. The day of the appointment I found out it was a girl. She was a very attractive probably almost 30. She asked me to pull down my pants and I hesitated because I felt awkward. She told me if I didn't feel comfortable she could get a male doctor. I said it was okay so I proceed and while she feels to see if I have any lumps or anything on my balls I get the biggest boner of all time. I was embarrassed and she said it was okay it happens. I also noticed her wedding ring and couldn't help but wonder how she would tell her husband when getting home from work. <laughs> Had to give a pee test for a new job. I was nervous. Not because I was on drugs or anything but because I never had to before. So I show up and fill out forms and then the nurse tells me to pee in the cup and not to flush or wash my hands in the tiny bathroom. I got nervous once inside and I had to poop and couldn't just pee and not poop, you know? So after like 5 minutes I open the door and tell her what my issue was. She was taken aback and was like that's fine just do your thing. So I went and then peed in the cup. I came out and handed it to her and I was like, do you want me to flush? She was just like, um yes please. Freaking awkward. 
Zero stroke 10 wouldn't do it again. This happened when I was around 9 years old. I had hurt my neck. Had a big bump on the side and couldn't hold my head up straight. I was in a lot of pain. So I go see the doctor and he asks me how I hurt my neck. So I explain that in gym class we were doing headstands and I was practicing on my bed at home. I fell over sideways. And hence the neck injury. Well. The doctor started laughing. Then. He left the room, gathered up the other doctors in the practice and made me tell them how I hurt my neck. Then they all started laughing. This was pretty traumatic for me as a small child. To this day I have no clue what is funny about a child falling over and hurting his neck. Maybe I could see why it might be funny to other children. But to doctors? I don't get it. That's cruel congrats doc. You gave a little kid shame. I went to the year for constant vomiting and stomach aches. The doctor asked me when was my last period. I told her that I was born with male genitals. She was embarrassed. I'm also. There was a lump. Near my genitals. 15 year old me was very concerned and had to go through the awkwardness of telling my mother I had a lump near my genitals and needed to see my pediatrician immediately. Pull down pants for doctor who sees my impeccably fresh shaven genitalia. Sees a lump. And immediately starts to laugh. I had used a cheap razor to get my nads to shimmer and glisten so spectacularly, which had caused an ingrown hair and cyst to form. He took a pen and drew the whole thing out for me on the paper atop the table. Wet warm cloth for a few days to bring it to a head and months of my mother awkwardly asking if I was sure everything was still okay down there. Wibbly wobbly testically westically. When the young. Female doctor wanted to check my cervix, and blushed when she said she needed to look down there. I was so embarrassed for her. Don't they learn the proper names for it in medical school? My then boyfriend has a giant dong, and he tore my fanny. I went to the hospital and they asked me if we were using any toys, or scissors. Haha <laughs> it was incredibly embarrassing. But luckily I didn't need stitches. The elderly nurse recommended a ton of different lubes to me which was pretty funny. I ended up in the air for a severe stomach flu, came down with it in full swing at my pain management doctor, couldn't leave the bathroom bc I was throwing up so hard I couldn't stop pee, let alone get the 50 featuring to my car. After the imps brought the stretcher to the bathroom door and took me the 3 miles to the hospital, before I could get the ives though fran for my nausea I kept throwing up violently and simultaneously pee myself. They had to change my sheets twice, it was so embarrassing to a nurse, not a doctor, that moment when I had to explain exactly how I knew there was a cyst on my cervix, I used euphemisms for a while, and she kept getting more and more confused, until I finally said I was masturbating and stuck my fingers up there, okay she seemed shocked at the concept. Went to the ear to have surgery on my leg, prep nurse told me she was gonna have to insert a catheter so I could pee during surgery. I had to ask my mom to leave the room so this other woman could shove a tube down my pee hole. Freaking awful. Went in for a regular checkup. I have anxiety so I was getting really nervous just waiting around for the doc to come in the room. Everything goes smoothly and she asks to take my blood pressure so I remove my coat and cardigan. At that moment I see that my blouse had massive underblub sweat marks that went down to the waistband of my jeans. Another win for the underblub sweat. I once thought I snapped my banjo string and I ended up having this strange foreign doctor touching my dong while he made small talk. The time I asked Dre for an autograph after a concert and he turned out to be exhibit. I didn't feel like a xenophobic butthole at all. I had just come back from camp and was brushing my hair, and I felt this weird little lump on the top of my head. So I showed my mom, and we had no clue what it was. Her thought was maybe it was a tick. She kept off trying to squeeze it and it hurt really bad. Off to the doctor we go, me slightly freaking out about Lyme disease. Nurse comes in, looks at watery eyed CNK93, takes one look at lump, prods it with a finger and states that's a birthmark. Gynecologist every time, I have the word respect tattoo down there, right above a tiny crab tattoo. C is a hell of a drug. What happened that time you suffered from second hand embarrassment on behalf of someone else who wasn't even embarrassed? My buddy tried hitting on my sister. I always thought it would be cool to have a chick that's a female version of my name here. Swing and a miss. 
I don't think it's your sister he was hitting on. I was at a college basketball game years ago when there was a bad call on the ref's part and the guy like two rows ahead of me and my friends yelled out something like you frick your mother with that mouth like it was really weird and inappropriate and not something you'd yell at the ref because it makes no sense. And then like everyone around him just got quiet and turned around to get a look at the guy who just yelled at with a what the frick is wrong with this guy look on their faces. I think the best thing I've ever heard yelled at a ref was during a minor league hockey game. When the ref made a bad call and this older lady stood up and shouted go back to foot locker the whole crowd was dying. My dad making semi flirtatious comments to waitresses in restaurants. It was in my public speaking class at a community college over a decade ago. I can't remember the exact assignment, or the context of the assignment, but we had to give a speech in front of the class every week. This girl got up in front of everyone and gave a full 5 minute speech about how her friend had sex in the butthole and didn't like it. I have erased most of what happened from memory, for good reason, but I just remember her shouting, at the top of her lungs, the phrase sex in the butthole multiple times in 5 minutes. I have never been more uncomfortable in my entire life and you could tell the entire class felt the same. Then I looked at the professor in the back of the class and she was white as a ghost. Like she didn't know how to process what the frick just happened. Sitting through 5 minutes of that was the most uncomfortable experience I've ever had in my entire life. I wonder if those 5 minutes made the class feel more uncomfortable than the friend felt when they had sex in the butthole and didn't like it. I was 14. My best friend. Who was really only my best friend because I was a quiet autistic submissive type who would go along with whatever she, a dominant personality, said, was trying to fit in with the crowd of loud, funny popular kids. The only catch was that just wasn't her personality. She's not a witty person. She'd been cracking jokes and remarks in almost every class all week and so far, a pity chuckle was the best response she'd gotten. One day we're all in registration class waiting on our tutor to come in and take the roll call before we head off to class and she thinks it'd be hilarious to get up and switch off the light. She struts over, flicks it off, and as she's walking back to her seat one of the language teachers walk in. Her name did you just turn off the light? Yep. The teacher looked confused, and just asked why. She responds, with the most crap eating grin. Because it was bright, and glances back at the class waiting for someone to laugh. No laughter came. Everyone either looked confused, annoyed or, like me, scared as to what the teacher would reply. I sank down into my seat. The teacher looked uncomfortable, said well yeah that's the point. Tutor's name is on her way down. She just got stuck in traffic and left. I can feel third hand embarrassment through this story. Once in high school we had an assignment to write an introduction for an imaginary movie book play or whatever you wanted. The teacher showed us a short text as an example. The weird girl in my class used that text and read from it at the end of the very same class and we were all like you didn't write it. It was the example the teacher showed us just now and she burst down crying and said that we were all mean to her and that she wrote it all by herself and that it was just a coincidence that it was identical with the example. Cringed so hard. You would be surprised how often students say it's just a coincidence when they get caught plagiarizing and their work is word for word from spark notes. And they stick to the lie no matter what. I was one day going out with my dad and his working college in a bar to have some drinks. I had a fresh driving license, so I should drink and drive them home after. It was not my dad whom I was embarrassed by, but his colleague, who really said to some hot blonde sitting next to me on the bar totally drunk. I think you need a proper daddy and the girl looks in disgust, and stands up and takes two seats away. She was my age as well and the friend of my father was nearly double my age. Maybe because the girl was my age I was embarrassed even more. This is awful. The third hand embarrassment is strong. I've told this story before but, I was a news reporter and I went to cover a local NAACP event. The host had a written out history of the local chapter she wanted a teenage girl to read. The girl took one look at it and handed it back, saying I can't read this, it hasn't been proofread. Very awkward. The host read it herself. It sounded like it had been written by a first grader. I like that teenager. You're not making Emmy look stupid. A girl in creative writing sharing her whole life story about her strict parents and how she had an unhealthy obsession with her sister. 
didn't even bat an eye, the teacher desperately tried to stop her. My mother-in-law does stuff all the time where it's embarrassing. One of the most embarrassing things I remember though is we were at Olive Garden since that is where my nephew wanted to go for his birthday. She asked for a senior menu, she had maybe just turned the age where you would even qualify or get a senior discount. When the server told her they didn't have a separate senior menu she demanded to speak to a manager and complain about it. Everyone there was mortified. Pretty sure my brother-in-law left a hefty tip as part of an apology. My wife's father would buy those fundraiser coupon books every year. Whenever we'd take him to dinner, he'd bring the coupon book even though we told him every time that we were paying and didn't want to use the coupon. Since we were taking him out on holidays, the coupons were always not accepted. We finally stopped taking him out after he threatened to strangle the waitress. In terms of real life a buddy of mine was talking to this girl we all knew and they'd been getting pretty flirty, so the decision was made to invite her camping with us in the hopes one of them would make a move. Flash forward to that night and our buddy did seemingly everything he could to frick it up, spilled beer on her, stuck his finger in her mouth for no reason while she had a look of WTF is going on here. Finally somehow she still didn't hate him and towards the end of the night he tried to kiss her and headbutted her pretty dang hard moving in too fast. After this they had a talk because this girl was apparently the crown princess of second chances and he threw up on her. Obviously this was God's way of intervention. The lord stepped in to save that poor girl with a hail mary pass at the end there. Xbox live parties when a chick joins and there is always a guy or two who starts pathetically flirting. I generally have to mute my mic, mutter Jesus freaking Christ and grab a beer. As that chick, a little solidarity goes a long way, even if it's just a generic knock it off. The number of times I've had to quit out of a session that I've really been enjoying because I'm so uncomfortable is pretty high. I no longer play GTA because of it. Almost every day this past school year, this girl who sat next to me in our math class, Jesus, she'd literally raise her hand until the professor saw her, then say these incredibly dumb jokes. Example haha, who has a brain cell and other crap that almost made sense but definitely didn't fit the tone. Professor was super quiet mid 30s guy who didn't even try to smile in response. I don't blame him btw. Deeper in the year the worse it got, like 2 or 3 times a class. I'd actually have to physically put my forehead against the desk because I felt so uncomfortable. I actually made a friend through it though. The other girl who sat next to me hated it too. We'd make uncomfortable eye contact and cringe together until the moments passed. I just hope everyone knew I wasn't a part of that whole mess. My buddy and I were at our local bar with some friends. And he got smashed on one too many shots of gold skledger. He suddenly decided he was a pool shark and tried to show off in front of some girls, as he challenged everyone in the bar to beat him. In 4 games, he sank 2 shots, both by accident. All I could do was shake my head as he continued to make an butt of himself. Worst of all, this was in front of a bar full of regulars, so he heard about that for years after. This sounds like how my dad used to make some extra money back in the late 60s. Except he all of a sudden got good. I was in a bus with a dude I knew and he tried to not pay for his ride. He was busted and kept on insisting that he paid. It was painful to watch. Denial really kicks in when you realize you've been caught out. I worked concert security. One shift, after the show finished. We were slowly moving the crowds toward the exit. Three of us guards were walking together when one of them spotted a woman standing just outside of the bathroom, holding a beer. This guard, female, walks up to the woman and says you really shouldn't be drinking that while pregnant. The woman replies I'm holding this for my husband until he gets out of the bathroom. The other guard and myself pick up the pace to distance ourselves from our fumbling co-worker. When we hear the woman continue also, I'm not pregnant. I've never run so fast from a situation in my life. I never question whether or not someone's pregnant if I notice a little pudge in their stomach. I wait for someone else, or that person in particular, to say it. A woman in the store I work with is the most cringe inducing person I've ever met. She sings to customers unprompted and without saying anything else to them and then stares at them expecting praise. She used to wear a shirt that says I write fanfiction. What's your superpower and refused to put her apron on so everyone would see it until management had to ban shirts with writing on them. 
She tells customers about her fan fiction in detail. She almost physically fought another employee who is a Captain America fan because she wouldn't admit that Captain America is a complete piece of crap who deserves to die. She keeps going places she has no reason to be in and getting stuck so one of the guys has to rescue her and if the person who comes and gets her isn't a dude she'll get stuck again. She tries to sneakily listen to conversations so she can butt in with one of her impressive but doesn't realize a 400 pound woman can't sneak for crap. And she forgets, or pretends to forget, to take her medication at least once a week and then over exaggerates her symptoms for sympathy. The last time she did it she rolled around on the floor and pretended like she didn't know who anyone was until someone told her she needed to go home if she was that affected. Also she has a crush on me, and a crush on my brother, and a crush on our exceedingly gay manager, and a crush on half the stock team. Except of course the black brown guys. And she thinks she's sexy and suave. I'm a bigger person so I can't say much but like. The woman genuinely looks like a pig. She also hates women and thinks she's better than all of them so she won't listen if a woman gives her directions. She's basically a female neck beard. Right down to the fedoras. She wears a fedora into the store sometimes and then throws a fit when she can't wear it on the floor. This would all be, well not normal but at least a little more understandable if she were in her teens. But she's almost 30 years old. I hate this stranger so much. Went out to dinner for a friend's birthday. Three people we know who are all an item together are invited, but are known for being notoriously cheap and it's explained to them the place my friend picked was a bit pricey beforehand. Brazilian steakhouse. They were told the price of dinner and they're like that's fine. Two guys and a girl, we'll call them Fred, George and Susie and their one year old daughter. Susie keeps complaining the entire night. That freaking waitress keeps interrupting. She was doing the simple check is everything alright. We could have done this cheaper and better at home. The meat here sucks. Fred and George were defending her the entire time yeah honey, you're right. Then the bill comes. Fred starts arguing with the waitress well we didn't think it was very good, so I don't think we should pay full price. Also my wife only ate the salad bar, a lie, so she should only be charged for that. The entire thing is freaking cringy. The guy whose birthday it is is pretty much mortified and embarrassed at this point because they're arguing for 15 minutes and didn't have a leg to stand on. Finally the manager comes over and gives Fred and George their meals half off and charges Susie for only the salad bar. They didn't leave a tip either, I doubled my tip and wrote an apology on the receipt. They then kept complaining about it the next 10 minutes while people were saying goodbye. I snapped calling Susie a pretentious stuck up B and walked off. I had to sit next to her the entire time, so after 2 hours my fuse was gone. A guy got pretty loud and confrontational with the waiters in a restaurant, to the point where people from multiple tables were staring at him going off. He just sat down afterwards like nothing had happened. Comma I'm not leaving. I'm finishing my coffee, yup, enjoying my coffee, Walter. I guess you could call him my step grandpa, my mom's weird husband brought his weird dad, part of it is autism, part of it is he's an old bud man who's never been challenged on his balls, to Olive Garden. First, he just sort of announces his drink order to the hostess while she's doing menus, easy mistake to make thinking the hostess is the waitress, except his drink order is I need a tall glass of skim milk, both the hostess, and then later the waitress had to explain to him why they don't just have a gallon of skim milk lying around. This made him so angry he said it was stupid that they had the wrong cows. So I'm thinking, well that was heck on earth. I guess old people forget not all restaurants are Denny's, and autistic people have important habits and routines. At least he has a water now. Nope. As you know, Olive Garden brings many things to the table. Drinks, soups, salads, breads, refills, cheese graters, and then more breads. Our waitress was new, so she had a hard time carrying so many things on one tray. She took a few trips. When she showed up with a big salad bowl and a bunch of salad plates, he was furious that she forgot his soup. When she showed up with the soups and breadsticks, he freaked out that she should have brought two baskets. Except Jesus Christ, she did bring two baskets. I swear to God at one point when the waitress poured water in his glass, 
I heard him try to go no. I ordered milk but it 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 the worst part of all this is that that 70 years old man was allowed to adopt a 10 year old girl. By the time they were 72 and 12, he had turned her into a total pariah. She had a major mustache that no one talked to her about. She didn't wash, wore the same basketball clothes until they smelled like butt, and she didn't see anything wrong or unusual about her father making the waitress cry real tears. So that was the night I cringed for like, 2 hours straight. This is a horrible story, get that girl some help and it definitely sounds like this man may be in the early stages of dementia. Oh this just happened yesterday. First class of summer semester in grad school, we were going around introducing ourselves. Professor wanted a typical what do you do for fun kind of answer, and this 50 year old IT guy just deadpan says, I love smoking crack see clearly it was a joke but it did not land. Everyone else in the room just stared at him until he said he was kidding. I'm sorry but I would have laughed at that. I went to culinary school, it was me and 3 other girls in our dorm room. Filled with embarrassment for one of my roommates as another roommate desperately tried to explain to her that hamburger helper doesn't have any beef in it, you have to buy the ground beef separate, she just did not understand. I have a billion stories about stuff she said did, she really was so ignorant and clueless about the wildest things, which always baffled me because she came from a very affluent family with 3 siblings attending one of the biggest colleges in our state, every single story makes me embarrassed for her. To be fair, if she came from an affluent family, she's probably never had hamburger helper. Someone I was dating and I were ordering at Culver's drive through She was talking to her mom over the car's Bluetooth and then all of a sudden her and her mother started cutting and yelling at each other. Well, if you don't know, at Culver's the whole shop can hear you if you're at the drive through The manager came barreling out with a red face telling her, you have to leave now. This is a family establishment as people don't want to hear your profanity that only pee her off more and she started going off on this manager. And so, dumb freaking me, thought maybe I could be the voice of reason. I say, hey let's just go somewhere else, we don't need them spitting in our food. I personally don't think they would have but she's a germaphobe to the max and I was just trying to convince her to leave. She left alright. And I just stood there with the manager feeling so embarrassed about her anger issues and then getting kicked out of the car. 18 year typical sheltered girl asks in high pitch with innocent tone what master bashan is in class and uni in the first semester. Wouldn't even shut up about it until she got an answer. Was awkward for the prof and everyone. My college did a free field days event where they hosted rides and games and other stuff. During the spring time, they had a big sumo wrestling ring where you put on the fat suits. I was sitting on a nearby bench watching people. It was a pretty fun time just watching people bumble around. Then this guy comes up, and he probably weighs 450, 500 pounds. They start trying to fit him into the sumo suit, and it's pretty clear right away that the suit is just not going to zip up on him. They tried for like 10 full minutes to get that suit on him. It might not sound like a long time, but it felt like 40 freaking years when you have that many people just standing around watching as they try to fit a fat guy into an even fatter guy suit. When my friend came over to my house for the first time and tried hitting on my stepsister only to find out that she's straight. Went to a steakhouse for my graduation party along with my Phil, Mill, Mom, Wife and Daughter. Phil orders mashed loaded potatoes which I found weird, since he always orders baked loaded potato. Waitress comes back with our order, and he very condescendingly starts to berate her about how he didn't order that and to take it back. I was to chicken to call him out on it, mostly just wanting the whole thing to be over. As a past server, there is nothing that feels better than when someone says I got their order wrong, even though I know I didn't, and one of their family members sticks up for me. I was in 7th grade and people thought that I liked this guy, so one day my friend asked me if I liked him and I whispered I don't like guys I like girls my friend shouted that I was gay. The guy I liked walked up to me later that day and said well that's a relief I don't think I blushed harder any other day than that. This is so 7th grade cringe it hurts. This time in high school when this girl was singing at our Christmas assembly, she was nice enough but honestly couldn't sing very well. It was so embarrassing. 
was at a friend's graduation ceremony with my dad and a few friends. My dad started playing a video on his phone with the volume at max and everyone heard. Literally all eyes were on him. I had to tell him his video was so loud everyone was looking. He stopped the video, but didn't think it was a big deal. My friends and I who were sitting right next to him were cringing. Later I found out my dad is actually deaf in one ear, which explained a lot over the years looking back. My GF can't watch Impractical Jokers because she gets embarrassed for the guys on the show. If you haven't seen the show, it's basically 4 comedians that compete to embarrass each other. Prepare for something amazing. A buddy of mine said he was trying to live vicariously through his friend, instead of vicariously. I almost died of discomfort. My friend telling my environmental science professor that climate change isn't real, and that we're really going through global cooling. Oh man. I was just at a conference where one of the panelists compared something to global warming because you know, it's always going up and down up and down. Freaking misinformation. I was on a romantic walk through the park with my girlfriend. There were lots of families enjoying the warm weather. I saw this young boy, 10 13, from my peripheral being to throw up behind a tree so his mom wouldn't see him. Like, full on throw up, with one hand holding the tree for support. When he was done he skipped away casually. A few moments later he came back to said tree and decided to pee out of the view of his mom. He dropped tro to his ankles and started peeing. Unfortunately, he wasn't facing the tree when he did this and he was knocked out of the view of anyone. Literally the only person who couldn't see him was his mother. He peed with no regard whatsoever. That was two weeks ago and I am still cringing. My dad talks about owning the libs. Praises Ben Shapiro constantly, and says oh we're starting a me too movement every time a guy touches a girl. Your dad is esoteric boomer. My friend got drunk and usually I am able to stop her in time when she tries to do something embarrassing. I was at the party with her and she said she had to go to the bathroom. I waited for her outside so I could drive her home, but got distracted when my brother's best friend, also drunk. Started vomiting in the bushes next to me. After a little while I went back in the house to find my friend. Assuming she was still in the bathroom I knocked on the door. I heard her muffled voice through the door and things like I've thought about this for a while. We should really give this a try. And other things that were barely intelligible because she was just that drunk. I barged in to stop her from doing whatever the heck it was she was up to only to find her on the phone. I took the phone from her and looked at the call did. It was our professor's name. At 2am she had drunk dialed our young, attractive creative writing teacher and told him she was in love with him. She was not. The next day she had to sit through that class, very hungover, and she didn't even care. She actually thought it was hilarious. Luckily he was cool and just laughed it off when she apologized later. TLDR. Friend drunk dialed our professor, confessed her undying love for him, and had to sit through his class for an entire semester. Every day a girl comes up to me with a bag of chips or in a redneck voice yells WHO wants some diabetes, and later in the day greet me in a Russian accent. That Hulk Huntman endgame scene where the kids don't want a picture with Scott. I got so much embarrassment cringe while everyone was laughing. When I saw endgame, as soon as the movie started a guy runs up to the front of the theater while recording a snapchat and yelling who's ready for endgame and not a single person said anything. Every day during our 9am production meeting whenever theft plenty manager calls on Greg, he is going to say something wholly inappropriate or go off on a tangent. Every. Freaking. Time. Otherwise he is a great guy. Old bastard of a boss of mine. 69. Was trying to flirt with a 20 something female cashier in front of me. This dude had a stroke or something cause his face constantly twitched and he was just a all around awkward person to be around. He has the worst flirting approach and execution I've ever seen. Leaves the girl extremely uncomfortable. I'm embarrassed and when we walk out he says crap man I think I blew it in there. My game is not like what it used to be I remember in that moment I thought dude that crap was so bad Helen Keller would have been embarrassed he did many other embarrassing crap but that one was probably the worst. Don't know if anyone will see this but, my mom dragged me to her friend's wedding reception and decided to show off her interpretive dancing skills as she put it. We have a picture of her flapping her arms around like a bird while I'm dying inside in the background. 
My dad came with on on a field trip back in elementary school. We had an admittedly attractive substitute teacher that day and she was introducing herself to all the parents. Sub, hello, I'm Miss Fine. Dad, why yes you are. Sub, walks away. This actually happened on Mother's Day. My sisters were burping and farting without any shame despite us eating outside with two tables right next to us. Also keep in mind my sisters are in their early 30s late 20s. That and my mother always asks for condiments and extra drinks and when the waitress comes over with them. My mother never says thank you. Anytime some racist relative makes an off color joke. Especially in front of whichever ethnic group they're making fun of. Old roommate dressed up in a tuxedo and slicked back his hair to go meet the girl he met on the internet. Who stood him up. Twice. This isn't even technically a real person but I can never watch American Pie again. The scene with the pie got me so bad I just turned off the movie and never finished it. Student clicked on the wrong file from his flash drive during his presentation. What funny embarrassing things have you seen during a presentation? Back in high school speech class we were supposed to give a humorous speech, and I freaking killed it. Everyone was laughing uproariously, and I was ready to double down on a career in comedy, until I realized my jeans had been unzipped and displaying my tighty what is the whole dang time. I was not able to play it off as part of the act, unfortunately. Unless you started flipping tables and really dropped it at the end, I'd say the majority of people would be unable to take such a thing seriously and would have assumed it was part of the act nonetheless. Left my computer open in the library while finishing a presentation before class. Left it closed. With no password. I'm an idiot. I To go to the bathroom. Came back to the library to pick up the computer. Walked into class. Plugged my computer in to present. Bikini pictures. Everywhere. Of a girl that sat in the first row. FML. I still don't know who did that. And leaving laptops out. With the exception of situations like that. Is normal and safe where I go to school. We're all weird. My boss was doing a big presentation for our corporate executives on the east coast. Halfway through our graphic designer logs on to IM asking how the presentation is going. His username is, of course, Ratfica. Had something similar happen. Except the video was of the dude presenting. Jerking off whilst wearing the undergarments of a lady. I knew the kid in high school. And he was the stereotypical anti-gay jock who working on becoming a cop. Was in the Marine Corps Reserve. Because the Army, Navy, Air Force were filled with F. F this. F that. Pick fights in community speech. Where this transpired. With the liberals. Anywho. He clicks play on the video, and steps out of the room to let the 2 minute intro video play. The video starts off with with him talking to an Eric, name change, about how he wants him inside him, emotionally and physically. Then it pans down to homeboy wearing ladies garments. Then he proceeds to take out his, incredibly small, like no more than 4 inches of full mast, dong and start jerking. By this time the whole class is in this weird haze of WTF is happening this is totally happening homeboy steps back in for some reason. Sees the video and sprints over to the podium and rips the VGA connection out of the laptop throws the laptop against the wall in one fluid motion. Then sprints out of the room. The class just sat there in stunned silence. Then the professor said well, that is going to be a tough act to follow but different student you're up. P.S. I ran into the kid about 7 years after this happened. He is a totally different person. Came out, and is living with his partner of 5 years. Glad to see he is happy. I think the teacher should get some credit for being such a smooth operator. Last few days of chemistry class, and we had to give individual 10 minute presentations on something chemistry related. No doubt. In the lunch break between, my friends decide they want to smoke out in their car. I'd already finished my presentation, so I decide to join them. I go back to class, not knowing that one of those guys was up next. If it's not completely obvious that he's baked out of his mind, he makes it so by stopping mid-sentence every two minutes or so to stare longingly into the light of the projector, and then letting out a giggle after every observation. He aced the presentation. TL. DR. Community college was awesome. Obviously his real report was about the chemical effects of pot on the brain. Back in high school Spanish class I had a friend named David. 
It was presentation day, and we had to give our presentation about any topic of your choice, as long as everything you said was in Spanish. It was David's turn to present and he was the awkward kid in class that normally didn't say much, but he was crazy smart, and was in all the AP math and science classes. He starts his presentation off well, but then starts to fumble his words a bit. His face starts to get bright red, and now because he is more nervous and embarrassed he screws up even more. One of the super popular girls starts laughing at him mid-presentation and he says back to her that she messed up a few words too, and that she doesn't have much room to talk. She gets that evil, mean, crazy bee look on her face, you know the one, and she starts shouting at him kinda like, who the frick do you think you are? Do you know who I am? You aren't crap. You're nobody, and your ugly yadda yadda more bitchy self-important girl bulls from high school. David just shrinks up a little more with each word, his face getting even more red. Then she says it, the worst thing to say to a kid ever. She is still shouting and says, Frick you, I think you should just go kill yourself. Do the world a favor at this point the entire class goes dead silent. Everyone knows that a few years ago David did try and commit suicide after one of his parents had died. He turned the oven on and climbed inside. Luckily his sister caught him before he died. But now here is this girl saying that he should go die. She was expelled from school later. But David had to go back to therapy for a few years. TL. DR. Friend David with history of attempted suicide gets yelled at mid-presentation by popular bitchy girl that tells him to go kill himself as a favor to the world. For a final project in some sort of 21st century media class, one kid's assignment was to report on how tattoos, or body art, are used by people in the 2000s to express themselves, or some bulls. Anyways, the kid decides to do a demonstration of a tattoo application, so naturally, he shows up to the final presentation with a box of markers, and a life-sized, naked blow-up doll, naturally. A guy in my class a few years ago was talking about the reconstruction and when he reviewed to play a clip, it turned out to be hardcore shit you to bestiality p. Q laughter. I spent a minute trying to picture what softcore shit shoot bestiality p would be, just drew a blank. My classmate went to type in her username and password, but the password began scrolling across the username area. Frickslet. My password is equally as fricked up, I hope this never happens to me. This story isn't flashy, but it stands out in my memory as a titan of awkward presentation moments. In high school I was friends with this really sweet, but extremely uptight girl, Ziying. She was normally the non-confrontational type, but she had a tendency toward emotional breakdowns. The presentation was for our religions class, and we'd been randomly assigned groups. She got stuck with a bunch cool kids who weren't known to be the best students in class. I don't know what really happened outside of class with their project, but it would seem that the other kids didn't help her with the presentation. Now, I have to add that presentation days were usually awesome. We were in an IB program with a relatively small group of students, so the atmosphere was usually sort of jokey and fun, because we all knew each other. But on this day, presentation days were about to be ruined and I was about to have a new level of Fremdschman etched in my emotional memory. The first few presentations were done, and Ziyang's group went to the front. Ziyang was holding this sad little poster board with cut-out text and graphs and pictures glued to it, and all the other group members are sort of standing around with their hands in their pockets. They proceed to take turns reading sentences off the board. After they'd all read, Ziyang started talking. She got about two sentences into her portion, and then started crying and saying she barely slept because her group members had ditched her with all the work. The room went that horrible quiet the way it does when people cry in class. The teacher gave her some words of encouragement to try to finish the presentation. A girl in the group standing behind Ziyang started to cry too. I think the other girl crying strengthened Ziyang's resolve a little, because she started the presentation again, except she only got a few more sentences in before she stopped and started crying again about how everybody thinks she is a pushover and her parents work all the time so she has to look after her brother. At this point, I think our teacher just didn't even know how to end it. After a few more seconds of silence, Ziying started the presentation again. It was madness. She would cry for a bit, then she would talk about Judaism or whatever, 
then she'd be crying again. I don't even remember how many times she started and stopped, but in my mind it feels like I spent years there. Ziang and I are still friends to this day. She really did have it rough back then. Ziang is indeed doing better these days, and as you might imagine, she has a pretty decent job. In junior year of high school, my friend had to do a paper for Spanish class. I forget what it was for, but he wrote it the night before in English, translated it on freetranslation.com, and handed it in the next day. He got it back about a week later with an F on it and he had to redo the paper. At first we all thought it was because of how poorly those websites translate full sentences and whatnot, but it turned out he translated it into French instead of Spanish. <laughs> Professor had his wife, both late 60s, in a provocative pose as his desktop. Not nude but seeing a 60 year old woman in bed holding bedsheets over her privates was a bit creepy and weirdly arousing. TL. DR. Everyone in class had the weirdest boner that day. Sad state of affairs if a two line post needs a TL. DR. In middle school my computer teacher was probably the weirdest person I'd ever met. He was fat in the worst way possible and only wore cargo shorts. Obviously to show off the thunder thighs. And spent most of his time talking about his horses or his civil war reenactments. He was always Robert E. Lee. He's obviously very important and was just generally awkward. One day while we were practicing typing, I went up to the stable, Riadus, his desk, to ask him a question, and I guess he didn't notice me coming as when I got there, he was looking at, admittedly tasteful, gay P. He quickly control plus tabbed out of it but not before my eyes were blinded by two flamboyant men in a bubble bath, one of which dressed as a rubber duck. I think he thought I didn't see or we both just pretended it hadn't happened and he was slightly nicer to me for the rest of the year. TL. DR weird teacher looks at classy gay P in class. The other day my business ethics teacher was discussing basic logic concepts, using P and Q as satisfying conditions for one another. At some point she said that some condition satisfies the Q-ness, and then proceeded to say satisfies the P-ness. Then she paused, looked horrified, and said that was terrible. As a math professor who's made the same faux pas, I upvote you sir madam. Speech class my junior year of college. I can't really make fun of this girl because English was her second language, but wow it was just awkward and really sad. So this Japanese girl is giving a speech about who knows what. I don't remember the topic. Anyway, part of the point of speech presentation class is to be able to give the speech with limited notes a small nautico to remind you where you are going and what your main topics are. So this girl is giving her speech and all of a sudden just stops. It's like she just completely forgot what she was talking about, right in the middle of making a point. Drops her nauticas and just stares out at the class with a confused dumbfounded look. At this point she gets really embarrassed and just starts stammering in broken English I saw we, I saw we, I need to go now, I so saw we, and just sprints towards the door at the back of the room. Don't see her again the rest of class, and I don't think she ever ended up giving that speech. First year of college and I had a public speaking class M, W, F at 8am. It's a Friday and we're doing speeches. We had an Indian woman in our class that was about 30 and couldn't speak Ingli very well. Her and her new husband just moved from India at the start of the year, as he had got a job in a factory in the town over. We were doing informative speeches that had to have a visual aid, and her speech was on the Taj Mahal. So she is going through her speech and no one is really paying attention. She sets up the visual aid, and the teacher goes up to help her start her video she brought. She didn't know how to use electronics that well. The teacher sits back down in the back of the room, and she is going on about how she went here a few months back for her honeymoon. Then out of nowhere, the video turns into a full on adult tape. This chick is blowing the guy, I assume her husband, before starting to take it from behind. The whole class including the teacher was at a loss for words. Everyone's mouth hung open as if we were acting out the video with her. After a minute this girl stands up, points at the screen, and says we're watching you frick you know. The woman turns and sees what I assume to be the worst thing in her life at the time, and frantically tries to turn it off. She was just mashing buttons not knowing how the heck the thing worked. After about 30 seconds of that, she just throws about 100 index cards into the air, 
and takes off running out of the room. The teacher then let us out of class. When I asked him about it at the end of the year, he had almost been fired for it, you see. By the end of that day, the teacher had been called into the dean's office and was questioned about showing P in his class. I guess he explained himself pretty well, and the dean thought it was funny. The girl did come to class the next Monday. In fact, she came to every single class the rest of the year. Teacher told me that he gave her a B out of sympathy. Sort of related. In my US history class in high school, our teacher needed a bit of a break from us. So he took us to a computer lab and allowed us to watch Braveheart. Not giving a crap about Braveheart, I opted to use the computers instead, as did several others. We had a large paper due. The prof was seated next to the printer in the room, and I noticed that he would pick up and glance over anything that got printed. So I went to the Wikipedia page on male lactation and printed that. It was good for a double take on his part. This was where AI back in the late 1990s. I was in the workforce. I'm old damn it. Now get off my lawn. Already and working like a boss for the man. Anyway we had a golf outing one day. We had about 100 or so customers out to visit our little factory. Later that evening drinks were had. So I. I did sales. Engineering. And ran part of the plant. And the accountant decided to screw with the head sales guy. A friend of ours. We get into his office. Turn on his computer and go online. Super fast dial up modem. Well we find a picture of a parrot perched on a dong. A rather long dong. But the pic was kinda narrow and didn't fit the screen. So we stretched it. So now we had a parrot perched on a 12 inches monster dong and set it to the guy's background. We turned off his computer. Giggled like drunken retards. And left. So the next day the head sales guy goes into his office with one of our biggest customers. They are talking and she. Yes. A she. Asks him about an order. So he boots up his computer. Needless to say he was both angry and amused at the same time. He somehow managed to hide the screen long enough to pull up something else to cover the background so he could then start the program he needed. TL. DR. Giant parrot perched on a 12 inches dong on my boss's screen while he met with our biggest client. I enjoy that I know exactly the image you're referring to. I had a student who wanted to hook her laptop up to the projector to do her humanities presentation for me. When everything got booted up, her desktop wallpaper was tiled with the phrase eat my pee now I told her I didn't think that would be appropriate as the rest of class was howling with laughter. She looked at me kind of confused and then saw the screen behind her. To state that she was mortified would be an understatement. And yes, I still made her give her presentation to the class. You are an evil. Brilliant man woman. My Italian teacher commonly has spelling mistakes in her slides for class. We were reading stories in English then translating the verbs to the appropriate tense. She scrolls down and the title says the art of fisting instead of the art of fishing. Laughs were had. I was in 6th grade in English class. The assignment was to write a 4-5 page short story using your imagination. Woo. And read them in front of class afterwards. We worked on these for probably a month. I wrote a masterful epic about going to a planet where these bolder people ran around with tentacles and laser guns. I was a hero and was overthrowing their evilness. My mom, being the awesome single parent she was for a while, always had a computer at the house. Not the best, but it let us learn stuff on it. 5. 1 stroke 2 floppy is anyone. This computer had word perfect on it. I wrote the entire thing in word perfect and DOS. Spell check was not as it used to be but it got the job done. Now, it's my turn to read my short story in front of class. About two pages in, the teacher sitting in the back of the room starts snickering. I ignore it and continue. However, soon she leaves and comes back with another teacher. Her best friend. They both start snickering and then just laughing. I realized then. Word perfect auto corrected tentacles to testicles and I've been reading it that way the whole story. The students didn't get it. Till the teacher pointed it out. While laughing. In tears. Great shame. TL. DR. Bolder men chasing the hero holding ray blasters with their testicles. Hero cuts a testicle off. I was pretty cool about loaning my USB drive to my roommates. And normally they just held on to them until I needed it back. 
One day this roommate returns my thumb drive as I'm about to leave for work and I just pocket it and drive away. Later that day, one of my super religious co-workers needs to copy some files for me. So I hand him the USB drive my friend returned to me. Up pops Windows Media Player with my friend's hardcore piece stash and my co-worker about bursts into flames. He stands up, tells me to get it off his computer, and walks straight over to my boss's office who is also a religious fanatic, that I spend the next hour having the most awkward conversation ever with my boss, and he agrees not to fire me, so long as I take part in a pornography addiction group that his church sponsors. TL. DR. Found my roommate's awesome pea stash. Dude, I hope you quit that job. In one of my journalism classes, law maybe, the professor decides to go to a pea website to prove a point. For what? I do not remember. Unfortunately this particular site got her stuck in the endless pop-up loop that can sometimes happen. Of course this was on the projector so the class witnessed this train wreck unfold. It probably wouldn't have been so bad had she known how to deal with the pop-ups. While not embarrassing, I did witness a presentation on gay hookup sites last week, in a queer theory class. The guy spent like 15 minutes of his required 18-22 minutes creating an account on adam4adam.com. This site is funded with advertising, so during the account creation, explicit images of the biggest dongs on the planet were on screen pretty much the whole time. I love that class. Pro tip, if you have to have pee on your presentation laptop, put it in a true crypt volume. Pro tip the second, log out of all IM programs before presenting so you don't get a Skype pop-up during a lecture saying, just thinking about your dong. The student copied the desktop shortcut onto his USB drive instead of the actual file. He spent 30 minutes with a professor trying to open it and they both couldn't figure it out. We got let out on a long break while they continued to not be able to figure it out. I was going to tell them but I really wanted to see if one of them would eventually figure it out, which they didn't. The computer was broken. It said the word desktop in the error pop up too. Also we got to take a long break and not do anything that week which was nice. Now I have another technique to use when I need to delay presenting something. In high school we all were assigned a specific part of Huckleberry Finn to give an informative presentation. Well this kid Daniel who was always somewhat of an outcast, is giving his presentation and when he gets to the subjects of Jim, he calls him N Jim keep in mind this kid is not black. The teacher stops him immediately and gives him a stern lesson on the inappropriate use of the word, but makes him continue the presentation. Everyone is sitting in awkward silence just looking at the one black kid in the class trying to figure out how to feel about it. Last year, this weird, socially awkward kid that no one could figure out was doing a PowerPoint presentation in geography class. He has a video and clicks on one file in his flash drive. What the whole class saw was two. 3D animated, furry hermaphrodites, fricking each other in the butt, crap and pee everywhere. The kid scrambled at lightning speed to stop it with no avail and actually threw the teacher's laptop across the room, and ran out crying. We never heard from him again. Most embarrassing situation you've been in, story inside, doubt anyone can top it. A few weeks ago I was frisky and for god knows what reason, decided to try use my cell phone as a vibrator. Anyway, it got stuck up there and the only person who could get me to hospital was my friend, who thought it was hilarious. On the way there he posted on Facebook informing the world of my situation, along with my cell phone number. For the next hour, I sat in the emergency room waiting area receiving uncomfortable stares as the phone in my butt rung and vibrated, all the while my flatmate laughing hysterically and telling me I'd better answer it as it could be important. My story. When I was 13 a doctor wrote me an adult dose for a certain medicine based on my weight. I was a fat kid. Our body does not work that way and the medicine ended up constipating me. For a month. I did not crap for a whole month. I got sick. I had raccoon like eyes. My stomach would jump or flutter by itself. I had cramps. Etc. It was bad. I was miserable. I finally told my parents how long it had been since I had crap and they freaked out and took me to the hospital. There, they gave three enemas back to back. After the third and final one, all that water softened all that crap up just enough I could expel it. I ran to the nearest bathroom, gown open in the back, 
and tried to make it to the toilet. I didn't. My butt was hovering at a 45 degree angle above the toilet when the geezer burst. This next part is not a lie, but I know some of you will think it is. I got crap everywhere. On the ceiling. Somehow. On the floor. The toilet was covered. The walls. Even the sink got hit with some spray. Crap was literally, yes literally, sprayed on all the walls and ceiling. It was everywhere. I felt like a new kid after that. Cleaned myself up the best I could and then had to figure out what to do. There was no way I could clean it all up. I needed a janitor. So I walked out and politely told a nurse the bathroom need a clean up and badly. A janitor was only a few rooms down for some reason so I saw him go by to clean it. But he did not know who I was. He got to the bathroom and the hole heard. Oh heck no. I ain't cleaning this up. I quit. And he did. I felt so bad. Still do. I made some poor janitor quit his job over a crap caked bathroom. The others were pretty dang good. But I couldn't breathe when I got to the oh heck no. I ain't cleaning this up. I quit. I'm not going to spend too much time with the details since this will likely just get buried at this stage of the post. My most embarrassing moment happened while I was working at a camp for the summer. I was a camp runner, meaning that I was the guy that drove into town for whatever reason. At night I'd sleep in a room with about 10 other guys, and the bathrooms were big and always busy, so I was completely abstinent nearly the entire summer. So one day I got a call that I had to pick up a camper girl who had been bitten by a spider and take her to urgent care. It was policy that if I was driving a camper of the opposite sex somewhere, there had to be another adult, 18 plus of the opposite sex riding with us. The other adult that came with us was this cute girl that I had had a few conversations with prior. I was somewhat sleep deprived at the time, and she knew this. So as she had her camp driving clearance and knew the way to the urgent care, she offered to drive, and I accepted. The camp was in the middle of nowhere, so the ride to the urgent care was pretty long. In that time I fell asleep. I woke up with my dong hard as a rock and the head of it poking out of the leg of my shorts. Before I was able to get my bearings, I felt a surge of pressure and proceeded to ejaculate onto the glove compartment door. Immediately I heard both a shriek and a girl yell, oh god, holy crap no I turned and looked at both girls. Both of them had obviously seen what happened and both of their faces were like beet red. The car was absolutely silent for the next 10 minutes apart from the sounds of me attempting to wipe up my semen with an old McDonald's bag. Finally we reached the urgent cur, and I dropped them off. After talking with the girl that drove the next day, I had apparently been hard for like 10 minutes. Both of them were fully aware of it, but both were too embarrassed to wake me up. That was the worst. TL. DR. Worked at camp. In car with two girls I barely knew. Had wet dream. Ejaculated on glove compartment. Arguably the funniest thing I have ever read on reddit. Was sleeping over at a girlfriend's house. In the middle of the night I needed to take a leak. So I got up and went about my business and went back to bed. In the morning I wake up next to a slender Burmese man. I was extremely confused and I look out the doorway and see her standing there signaling me out. TL. DR. Slept with my girlfriend's dad. My most embarrassing moment, daughter's bf crawled into my bed in the middle of the night, pretended like asleep until he left, entire night feared he'd get frisky. May not beat yours, certainly most embarrassing moment of mine and my wife's, got my wife an early birthday gift, smartphone, first ever for her, she'd been using some old indestructible nokia forever, I wanted to bring her into the 21 century, data, social networking, GPS etc. Her actual birthday rolls around. Even though I got to the phone, I had nothing for the actual day. After morning out of bed ritual of shower and teeth brushing, I decide to sexy myself up. Oil all over me. Tie in some shirt cuffs. I am new save be listed attire. Was going for Chippendale's dancer. Call her back. She is rolling in this. Just loves it. Takes a picture with her new phone. Plot thickens. We go fishing. Catch a few head home. Fillet and cook the fish truly looks like a gourmet meal. Wife takes a picture of the fish with the phone. It's late now day is over wife is off to bed. I decide to stay up and play some video games on the PC. Before she went to bed she was uploading pictures to Facebook. Fishing in the meal etc. First image she uploads is my nude shot. 
thinking it was the prepared fish fillets, now titled in a yum. Wife couldn't figure out how to delete this accidental post on the new phone. She screaming running through the whole house to the computer room where I am. Kicks me off forcefully. What I see is to my amazement. Me nude on Facebook. Already two comments. Post deleted. Mission success. Wrong. Post was deleted not the mobile upload photo to albums. Needless to say 13 some odd hours later finding more comments of praise and family disgust. Realize what has actually happened. TL. DR. Wife got her first smartphone accidentally uploaded a photo of me nude to Facebook where it was viewed by everyone we know. When I was in the navy, I was standing watching the engine room one day, or night, I don't remember. I was on a submarine, so you lose track of those kinds of things. Anyway, it was during a workup for a reactor safety exam, so all of the engineering depth was tired from running drills during their off hours, when they would normally be sleeping. About halfway through my 6 hour watch, I had to crap, but I didn't want to wake someone up to stand my watch while I pooped, so I held it in like a boss, for 3 hours, until my relief came. By the time I was screaming down the peeway to the watertight hatch, I had to go so bad I was almost puking, but the watertight hatch that separates the engine room from the forward compartment is about 2 feet off the ground. Too high for me to just bend my legs at the knees and scoot through. My anal clench is the only thing holding back this fecal maelstrom. So I undog the hatch. It's a big mechanism. Takes a few seconds to open. And lift one leg to get it through. And my colon unloads with a fury unmatched. Tube 1 has been launched. And the charge is currently running out of my boxes. Out through the leg of my coveralls. Onto the deck and rolling a few inches to the horrified gaze of the rest of my watch team standing behind me, through the strange mixture of embarrassment, shame and nausea from having to poop so bad, I can't manage to say anything except oopsies. Luckily, I'm an engineer so I have a rag in my back pocket, so I go to scoop it up, bending over straight legged and cheeks hugging like high school sweethearts. I walk through the hatch with crap in hand and head forward. The first room you hit when you head forward is the mess, where most of the crew who is awake and not on watch hangs out, watches movies, plays games, etc. Right now, it's full of off-going watchstanders having whatever meal is being served. I go to toss the rag in the trash, and one of my buddies who watched this whole thing unfold is standing in the middle of the mess deck and shouts hey Mikey, WTF are you doing? You can't throw crap in the trash, which is actually true. We compact all of our trash and jettison it. Anything that has liquid in it cannot be compacted or it will lose out the side of the compactor and possibly squirt the poor kid that has to operate the machine. So I'm standing there with a piece of crap in my hand. Half the crew is there, chewing on chicken wheels and staring at me and my bundle of joy. That was the most embarrassing thing I think I've ever had to endure. Upvote for the oopsies. I'm a big guy. But my fiance's female Australian shepherd always acted dominant around me, and tried to hump my leg on several occasions. So one day on the back deck, it tried to hump me again. So I decided to show her who's boss. I grabbed her from behind and started humping her. I did this for, I don't know 10 seconds. When I looked up, the new neighbors, who'd just bought the house next door, were all standing in the yard holding their cardboard boxes. Just watching me, at the moment, I thought it will seem odd if I stop humping now, so I kept humping, and just waved to them casually, they didn't say a word, and the next week, put the house back up for sale. All I can imagine is Sasal Milan getting a phone call from your neighbors, after a few seconds he just quietly places the phone down on the counter and back slowly and carefully away from it. 7th grade Spanish test, it's all quiet in the room. I'm a long haired greasy socially awkward geek. I feel a sneeze coming on but decide to hold it back so as to not draw attention to myself. I try, but cannot contain the sneeze inside. It takes the path of least resistance out of my body my completely stuffed up nose. The sound is incredible. The snot tent is amazing fully formed spider web of snot between my desk and my face. The classroom turns to look at me and sit in stunned silence. After about 10 seconds, the girl in front of me, the hottest 7th grader in a school, says loudly that's gross everyone laughs. I try to disappear. Posted this the other day, a couple of seniors of my high school were pulling into parking lot, 
before school, in a Beta F-150. It was a nice Friday morning and they had come up with this silly plan to do a drive-by mooning of some popular girls. No doubt to impress. They had done this before so they had a rehearsed plan. As they proceeded to pull closer to the girls, the driver honks his horn as the passenger drops his pants and sticks his butt all the way out the window. The passenger felt a nice fart welling up inside at this time, so he decided it would be extra funny to turn this into a drive-by gassing. He executed with precision timing. Here is where it all goes wrong. The previous day was seen a ditch day and he spent much of the previous day consuming copious amounts of alcohol, apparently passing out a number of times. So when he let her rip it was not a bubble of gas he was releasing, so much as a torrent of bile and fecal matter, in the form of a geezer. From 5 feet away at eye level, he had unleashed 24 pko crap and hosed the girls. While the first escaped with little damage, the two other girls had taken direct hits. Vomit, screaming and crying was produced by many spectators. Holy crap, this may just top the ARP story. Got great amusements from this. So it's junior year in high school, I'm in first period theology, catholic school, and I'm tired as heck, ironically. There's a cute blonde sitting in front of me and a cuter redhead in back. Despite being tired, I flirt with both of them before class starts, bit more so with the redhead, I'm feeling good about life. So when class begins, satisfied, I put my head down and descend into the deepest of in-class slumbers. What felt like about halfway into class. I'm awoken by the most ungodly sounding flatulence, I mean this was a like a bear fart. I raise my head, in my drowsy stupor, wondering who it may have been and notice the entire class and teacher are looking towards my side of the class. Being tired, I apathetically put my head back down to sleep, but only to be jolted awake, seconds later, by the realization that it was me, I freaking farted myself awake. I mean, I had felt my desk vibrate. Needless to say, that was the last time I ever flirted with the either the blonde or the redhead, who probably got a pretty good idea of what my butthole smells like, or anyone who was in the class ass 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 tl, dr, I nearly crap myself awake in class. A long time ago, my sister, who was 7 at the time, was napping on the living room couch while my mother and I were figuring out the internet. Back in the AOL days, my mom and I are in the middle of a conversation, when all of a sudden we hear huge flatulence coming from my sister. Then she bolts straight up and looks around in confusion. We lost it. I was dying from laughter. This one has haunted me for years. It was the first week of 10th grade, and I was new at my high school. My other new kid friends and I sat down at a table in the cafeteria, and another new girl sat down with us. She was in a wheelchair. So I expected her to be really timid and introverted, but she was actually sarcastic and funny, introducing herself and making jokes about being in a wheelchair. Example, comma her, I'm trying out for field hockey, comma me, wait, really, comma her, haha <laughs> no you idiot, I'm in a wheelchair. Eventually one of my friends boldly asks her about how she ended up in a wheelchair, she says it was cancer, my friend asks which kind, she responds, leukemia. Have you heard of it? Now, bear in mind, she was funny, she really was, and come on, who hasn't heard of leukemia? So my gut reaction to her response was that it must be a joke. I mean, everyone's heard of leukemia. It was too late. I burst out laughing. I immediately realized what had happened and tried to cover it up by gasping. It only made it worse. Everyone at the table glared at me. I spent the rest of lunch in absolute silence, and I never spoke to her again. TL. DR. Don't laugh at leukemia. Ever. When I was 14 and almost always thought with my penis, I decided it would be great to masturbate with a condom on. Liked how it felt and did it all the Tims for about a week. They also happened to be my dad's condoms. So. Long story short my mom realizes that so many condoms are missing and thinks my father is having an affair, comes crying to me about it and my initial reaction is to deny any speculation that I you 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 that I cried for an hour. TL. DR. Use dad's condoms for W anking. Mom thought he was cheating, had to tell mom I liked to masturbate with condoms. 
You may have been crying but you were quite a man to own up to it. Frick it. Here it goes. So I was at work and I had to take the Titanic off shoots. I proceed to go to the restroom and sink that crap. Before I flush, I always look. But what I saw this time was horrifying. This crap was the size of a toddler's leg. Flushing isn't an option anymore. I panic and start to look for a solution. Outside the stall I look in the trash and find an empty Pringles can. I proceed to scoop the appendage crap. I breathe a sigh of relief. I flush the remainder and walk out of the stall. My co-worker walks in and says ooh Pringles. Give me one. Before I could say no, she grabs the can and puts her hand in. She freaks out looks inside the can and yells. What the frick is this? All I could mutter was crap. Once you poop, you just can't stop. I posted this a while back but it's just too good. My little brother. My brother is a frickin' weirdo. We will just start it like that. Basically, he always found it really funny to run into whatever room someone was in. Pull his bare butt cheeks apart and fart at them and then hysterically laugh at them. I mean, it really was quite funny sometimes. But this one time, my mom and I were in her room talking and all of a sudden my brother bursts through the door, spins around, does the obligatory spread. But this time something disgustingly magical happened. The most perfect, spherical ball of crap about the size of a large ball bearing shot out of his butt and landed on the floor in front of us. Silence. Then my mom and I proceeded to laugh so hard we cried and my brother was so mortified that he started crying and ran out. He was 11. Man that was amazing. Little crap never did that again. I have two. Both similar. I have been caught masturbating by my mother twice. Both times catastrophically embarrassing for me. The first time was nothing unusual. In my bedroom, she knocked and then walked and not a second after. What the heck's the point of knocking? I was naked but was able to cover up quickly, but she still knew and walked out. I was 17 and I had older cousins, so she asked my aunt about what to do. But she explained what she did with her two older boys when she caught them. This was of course my more gossipy aunt and proceeded to converse with her other sisters and brothers that my mother had come to her with this advice. Fast forward a couple of weeks to a family birthday party. I feel everyone's eyes staring at me, their glares penetrating my skin. My older cousin Allison comes up to me and strikes conversation. Eventually asks me, so how did she catch you I said, um, excuse me she replied, your mom caught you masturbating. Didn't she I suddenly was so overcome with embarrassment that I began to sweat profusely and vomit. Vomit lots, and lots. Like I said unfortunately there were two times. The second time was a little worse. Our computer is in the living room. I was too poor for a laptop. So I was sitting in the spinny computer chair naked. Clothes not even in the room with me. I had gotten home from class a little early and figured I had a few hours before my mom came home from work. I was horribly mistaken. Unfortunately she had been sick and decided to leave early. I heard keys on the other side of the front door. And I panicked. So I turned the speakers and the monitor off as fast as I could. But stayed seated. When she entered, she saw her son sitting quietly at a blank computer screen, but as naked with an erection. Luckily I don't believe she saw that part of me seeing as I stayed facing the opposite direction of her, but still terrifyingly awkward. We avoided speaking and eye contact for about 2 weeks. TL. DR. Mum caught me masturbating. Told my family about it. Made me puke. Second time I was naked in the dark. Sitting in front of a dark monitor. Frozen like a statue as she just walked past. Sounds like you need to stop masturbating naked. Thundershaft. That's incredible. And my story definitely doesn't beat yours. But maybe it will make you feel a little bit better. When I was senior in high school. I chaperoned a middle school trip for my church. And for a few days everything went better than expected. The day before we left my stomach started to feel a little queasy, but as I was not in a situation to deal with the problem, I gritted my teeth and waited. Over an hour later I can finally access the bathroom, but I have some 100 yards between it and me. I know I can make it, I know I can make it, I couldn't make it. 15 feet from the door everything went to heck. About an hour later I walk out of the bathroom wearing pants that were not my own. As you can imagine word spread like wildfire. Like I said, not nearly as bad as yours. Oh no. My boyfriend's landlord is my French teacher from high school. 
it's not a bad situation I was a good student, and it's not like the landlord is over all the time. One day, the boy was going down on me it was the middle of the day and nobody else was home, so I felt no fear in loudly expressing my appreciation. Once I had finished, there was a sharp knock on the door of his room. Hey, rent's due. Good job the landlord called. Apparently he had been standing out there waiting. While I appreciate his allowing me to finish, I still can't look the guy in the face. 7th grade, right before school let out for the summer, out of class early, decided to go get some freezies, came back with a box of the dang things, couldn't eat them all, between 3 of my like minded and equally bored friends, we decided to start bribing people to entertain us for freezies, curiosity ensued, hey, we'll give you a freezy if you show us your dong, it was going along pretty well, then this one guy refused, but countered with a I'll show you mine if you show me yours thing. No way. The going rate is one dong per freezy. And there's three of us here. So you better have three dongs under your pants. Then he tried arguing like. One dong freezy is equatable to one set of boobs freezy. Which was just plain poor logic. Because we had the box of freezies and he didn't. Supply and demand 101. Anyway. I we settled on some exchange of T versus dong. And he delivered first. Just as I was lifting up my shirt, my godfather English teacher, middle school headmaster, rounded the corner into the common lounge where we were, and commented, Ah, summer esprit, the birds, the bees, my goddaughter's naked tit ties, a little flat, but you've some time ahead of you yet, please give my regards to your father, idk, there was just something about that delivery, so deliberate but aloof, also, the burning shame. Your godfather wins. Best possible response. I live near a pretty congested street and once when I was about 13 my friends and I decided to go for a walk. I was wearing some white jeans as it was summertime and I was trying to look cute. It was the 90s okay. Anyway, we're walking around when I realize that hey, I feel funny maybe it's time to head home. I get home and my pants felt a little warm. I thought meh, it's was. I go to the bathroom to pee and freshen up and to my shock and horror I had started my period. Bright red blood was all over the back of my pants. There was no way people didn't see that. I guess it was less embarrassing because I was oblivious. But I was so ashamed nonetheless. Heard from a nurse friend. Someone got to the hospital for similar reasons. It was a regular vibrator. But they could not remove until the batteries died. Needed butt surgery. The funny bit is that the vibration was going through to the stretcher's frame and all personal could hear the hum in the hallway. Hard not to laugh apparently. The first time I met my ex-girlfriend's parents and family, it was Thanksgiving, and PS2 had just came out. I went over we were having dinner and her whole family was there celebrating. Her dad and I start talking. He says he is a big gamer and would love to try it, so I go and get it from my house. I just lived a few miles down the road, along with my VCR because their TV was old and it was the only way the PS2 would work. So he starts playing M2K or some crap. Then about an hour into the session, my ex's little sister sitting next to the VCR I brought accidentally hits play with her foot. This causes the VCR to play a tape which happens to be a hardcore PR left in. Up pops a Latino chick getting DP'd on screen in front of her grandmother, little children of the family, mom, everyone. Her dad just says god dang satellite and tries turning it off with the remote. I wait a second, probably a little too long, I could not move from shock, and shamefully get up and walk over to the VCR to turn it off. Her dad says wait was that yours embarrassed as heck I say yep. Everyone laughed and she was so pee. But I ended up being with her for 3 years so it must have not bothered him too bad. Also her family other than her parents were evangelicals they judged me from that point on. And I cannot blame them lol. TL. DR. First time I met Dex's family. Brought PS2 and VCR to hook it up. Old TV. On Thanksgiving. Play gets hit on VCR accidentally. DP porno pops on in front of whole family and grandma. I know of a story. A friend of mine is an EMT and he responded to a call of a sex session gone horribly wrong. For some reason, they wanted to do some role reversal, and so the male insisted that the female shove a coke bottle in her vagina and let him suck it like a penis. So, 
He shook it up, shoved it in, and opened it, and it got his face all wet. Apparently though, it also got lodged in her vagina. They didn't realize it until later, when it got worse. They tried anal, and the neck of the bottle got stuck in his anus and so when they called 911, the EMTs found them naked, attached from her vagina to his butt. And the EMT went on to direct human centipede. Throw away for your information, I'm late for the party, but this is my time to shine. This little event took place about a year ago, and it is by far the most embarrassing moment of my life. This is my ultimate Larry David moment. Anyway, I was at uni during lunch hours, and I suddenly felt an urge to release the chocolate hostages. This is actually a rare event, as I'm not really comfortable pooping in public, but as uni was almost empty, I figured the situation was at least as good as it could be. In my search for the most abandoned bathroom on campus, I eventually found the perfect spot. It was perfect, it was clean and it was big, it even had some fancy armrests on each side. I sat down and enjoyed one of my best poops ever. It was huge, it was liquid and it smelled fantastic. From my puff, I sat there pondering, and started reading the newspaper. After about 20-25 minutes, I had to get ready for a lecture and started finishing. The lecture room was nearby so I wasn't really in a hurry though. I folded the newspaper neatly and put it in my bag, washed my hands and opened the door. You probably guessed it, but no, not only one person was waiting, two people were waiting, in their wheelchair, each of them with their personal handicap assistant. This is normal in Norway. In a moment of shock and embarrassment I realized I had chosen the only handicap wheelchair accessible bathroom on the entire campus. The floor was swallowing me. It felt like a blackout. I was traveling through distant galaxies. And then I just froze. I stood still like a model posing for a painter. It was the longest seconds in my life. Well, this is where it gets uber awkward. Some part of me thought hey, we got this bro. Relax and then I decided to walk with a limp. Without saying a thing, the worst part was that when I first started dragging my right foot in the most over exaggerated manner you can imagine, I knew it was too late to stop, I had to finish my act. I have never been so embarrassed. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. for now.